Donaldsonville and WDGL HD2 Baton Rouge. This hour brought to you by Spencer Callahan Injury Lawyers, LA 21-12681, offices in Baton Rouge. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. on Thursday, March 21st. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect rainy skies with a high of 66. In hour one of today's show, we'll recap LSU spring football practice as the Tigers got back on the practice field. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, starts now. Ready we go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Abear. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench, bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what up, y'all? What's going on? It is Thursday, March 24th, 2024. 21st, 2024. Uh, it is NCAA Tournament Day, huh? Here it is. The big dance. March Madness. Shout out Grambling State. Getting it done last night. Um, what well, we can talk about a bit more later on, but Grambling down, what was it, 16 in the second half? Managing to find a way, come back, beat Montana State. I want to say, what were they, the sixth HBCU school to, uh, or the ninth? HBCU to win a game in NCAA tournament history. The sixth since 2000. And uh, just 11 years ago, you're talking about a program that was 0-28. And now 11 years later, finding their way to the big dance. We'll have Purdue on Friday. So, um, yeah, man, look, a lot to get to today. Like I said, tournament's starting up. We got some spring ball as uh, the players met with the media. There's another SC baseball weekend that will begin tonight with a couple of series. Arkansas and Auburn and State at A&M. Um, which led to an interesting conversation where I was, I was, so I was, I was, I was texting uh, Rivers about the state A and M game, right? And I'm like, you know, yeah, like screw A and M, beat him, whatever. Even though you beat, like, you know, I, I hate A and M, right? And uh, she kind of asked, why do y'all hate A and M so much? And because remember, when we asked who do you, like who's the worst to lose to the other day, three of us said A and M, right? Jake, mm-hmm. you said Florida. Right. Uh, we know your history with Florida. But outside right. of that, everybody said A&M. And I feel like if you polled LSU's fan base, that would almost be the answer. But when I was asked why, I kind of fumbled around a little bit, right? Is it like, is it because there's such crossover in Houston between the fan bases? Um, is it because they think they, they're they like better than they are? Or is it because they have all this money and that makes them think they're better, but then they're not good at sports, so that's like our superiority? Like, why do you think we actually hate Texas A&M so much? So I have an answer as this person in here who probably hates them the most. Keep in mind, I got a lot of pent-up anger. Yep. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as short yep. as I can. Um, I don't <laughs> respect anything about Texas A&M, anything about their athletic program. Do you want to know why I hate to lose to them so much? Yes. Because they're a bad athletic program, and yeah. I don't think LSU should lose to a team like that. If you lose to a Florida, if you lose to an Alabama, I'm okay with that because I've seen them have success. I respect nothing about Texas A&M. I don't like any of their cultures. I think the yell leaders are stupid. Oh, You're the yeah. only team in the country that does it. There's a reason for that, by the way. It's just I don't like any. <laughs> Thing about them I don't think they belong in the SEC I guess that's what maybe confused me is that I kind of do like the yell leaders um and and I kind of appreciate some of the cult cultish aspects as being like you know kind of indicative of why college sports is quirky or fun what about you Alondra uh um, why do you think you hate Texas A&M so much is, is it being well, from Texas and now you know siding with LSU a, a, a traitor to your kind in some ways. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a traitor type thing because I've never liked Texas okay. A&M. I want to, first of all, second everything that Taylor just said. <laughs> and also, um, when I was growing up, like I grew up in like a UT household. Like we were like Texas folk. And, okay, um, okay. So yeah, so you They so used to be been, in the yes, same yes, conference. Yes, yes. So that may, well, that makes they all were the rivals sense. when yeah. they were in the same conference. But yeah, they're... they're so I hate, you've, you've, I hate you've, you've had allegiances so. to two fan bases that kind of inherently hate A&M yeah. in uh, Texas and LSU. Yeah. So that, 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 that checks out. And they're extremely mediocre and think that they're not. So I think, uh, Jake, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, I, I think it is they 
believe they're superior or they should be, but the results don't speak to that. And yeah. I guess that triggers people, right? I mean, yeah. maybe it's maybe it's a fact that they manage their oil money a bit better than the state of Louisiana did, and so they have all the riches that should be ours that kind of play into some of that as well. But, yeah, yeah. maybe it's they just think they're better than they are or something. Like, they won a national championship in 1939. Yeah. That long ago. Fair. You know? Fair. Not yeah. even 100 years ago. So. Yeah. True. Um, still within the thriving. century. Yeah. Anyway, I, th- I just thought that was kind of interesting to try to parse through because as I tried to explain myself, I was kind of like, I, when did I start to hate them so much and why is it so deep? Uh, I think the seven overtime game actually was. That juiced oh, that it up was one so of, bad. That juiced it up a lot. One of the trigger points for a lot of people. There is, he, that, that was to an extent to me, but look, I'll put it this way. When I lose to Alabama as an LSU fan, it's like losing to the rival and you're, you're battling back and forth. You're like, dang it, you got me again. When I lose to Texas A&M, it's like when you're in high school and your middle school brother actually beats you at something. Yes. You didn't yes. expect it to happen. You know he's going to hold it over your head until okay. you eventually beat him down the next time. That's but a good call. That, that's that just, that's just how I view it. It's a very good analogy. Uh, it does feel like losing to your little brother. Not that they are like little brother necessarily, but you're well, losing to a team right. that you view as uh, should be less than. Yeah. Again, losing to Alabama, you lost to the champs. Ah, you know, you know, good fight, right? Good fight. You dap it up. You, you keep it moving, and you get ready to fight again another day. Um, okay. Okay. I was that, born into talk. the hate. Yes. Uh, good talk. I, I feel like we. I feel like we parsed uh, through through that a bit. Help, help myself out. Um, so we also got a big time Pelicans game coming up tonight. Uh, did you know that the Magic are good now? Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea. I only view the NBA through the uh, Pelicans lens, so I can lose sight of Eastern Conference teams for large swaths of time. Uh, but look at the. You, the, the the Pelicans and the Magic are the Paul Rudd meme. Uh, look at us. It's a couple of five seeds chopping it up. Who, Who would have guessed? And I mean, no no play in here. Um, uh, two of the best defensive teams in the NBA. Uh, 6 p.m. is going to be in Orlando tonight. Magic winners of four in a row. Pels winners of three in a row. Um, there's an insane Shohei Otani story uh, where his interpreter has... Well, it's 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 odd, Jake. So apparently, Shohei Otani's interpreter just got fired. It's like his best friend as well. And um, oh yeah, I'm, they're probably together more than anybody else in yes, his life. Twenty four seven, they're together twenty four seven. Um, he's paying him like five hundred k a year reportedly. Woo. Uh, but old boy racked up four and a half million dollars in gambling debt it to a uh, Southern Cal bookie. It's very, I mean, it does read like Squid Games almost in 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 how out of control. Um. Uh. What's his name? Uh. Epi. Miz- I don't know how. It's like. Uh. Mizuhara. Mizuhara. Yeah. yeah. It, it. 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 definitely got out of control for Mizuhara. That's um. O- Otani's interpreter there. But the crazy detail is this. So he came clean about everything. Mizuhara did, and he sat down with ESPN for ninety minutes on Tuesday, and laid out everything in detail about how he accrued a bunch of gambling debt. Um, he told Otani about it. Otani uh, ag- agreed to pay off the debt for him. And Otani actually sat down with him to pay off the debt and put his name on the um, on the loans because he didn't trust uh, Smart. You know, he didn't trust me to hunter with the, the money, thinking he would just go gamble it yeah, away. Yeah. Um, but then, from Tuesday to Wednesday... The story completely changed, and now Mitsuhara is saying that Otani had no idea about any of the gambling uh, and that he stole money from Otani to pay off the debts and, uh, and, and, and instead of Otani like sitting down with him and helping him to, uh, to pay it off. So it seems like some lawyers got involved and said, like, look, even if Shohei wasn't gambling, which I, just, I don't actually think he was um, from, from reading everything and looking at all this, but it looks like Laura's got involved that you don't want his name anywhere near this. So, Mitsuhara, you're just going to have to say that you stole all this money. And yeah. um, sorry, bro. I'll help you out. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, I paid off the debt. Yeah. You're not going to get his uh, you're, you're not gonna get his legs broken. 
<laughs> You're not going to be wearing concrete shoes. But. but this has led to obvious conspiracy theories where it's like, was Otani gambling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for what it's worth, they're claiming no gambling on the MLB, just like college football, NFL, NBA. I do want to know their college football bets. I would love to know their college football bets. I really bets. want to know the college football bets. Um, but, uh, yeah, crazy story out of baseball. Top story in Japan um, right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, right now, even, I'm getting texts. I don't think the interpreter bet all that money. They're trying to cover it up. Uh, but Otani was betting on baseball, and they're trying to have the interpreter take the fall. I mean, that that is that is a conspiracy theory that is swirling right now. And the changing of the story isn't helping anything. No, nah, it's not. Uh, it, it, even even if maybe it was legally the prudent thing to do, it, 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 it feels... Um, it, it, it looks bad on the surface, right? Like, I'll read a text that just got verbatim. Otani's name comes up in a busted gambling ring with millions in payments. At first, his team tries to say yes, he paid, but it was to cover for his buddy. Then they change course, say he never knew, and that Ipe stole from him. Yeah, I mean, it you know feels a little sketchy on the surface there. Yeah, and they can, they'll can they find a way to figure out what you were betting on some way, somehow, even though it was with a bookie and not through a betting site. But if they find out that it was baseball bets, then that's a whole different subject. And I'm not saying it was, but I also know the Angels lost a lot of games with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. A lot of games. Oh, wow. Uh, though you're taking the conspiracy one step further. Not that Otani was just gambling, but that he was actually Good. throwing games. I mean, the Angels, you're right. You got yeah. two of the most generational players, and you're that bad. And you don't even make the playoffs. Um, that yes. was always my question. Like, how do you have Mike Trout and Shohei Otani and do absolutely nothing with it? There you go. But I don't think. Because you're I mean, a degenerate gambler. It's, it's crazy because <laughs> no, his know. name sounds... his name is on the loan. Like it's it comes up yeah. a yeah, lot. Yeah, no, and for sure. I, I the you shouldn't have changed stories. I get changing the story, but you shouldn't have. Like you need to double down on one thing. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't look great uh from an optic standpoint. Am I too naive in just thinking Shohei looks really nice? Yes. And I'm like, oh, I don't he think does, he did right? this. He does, right? Yeah. So sweet, dude. Yeah. Look yeah. at him. Look at him. He just seems Always so... Always smiling. So, he's so wholesome. Like, Nobody even like knew Shohei. he got married because he's so, like, whatever. Freaking but I was telling Taylor this morning, like, that Shohei thing happened, and then Yamamoto, who's supposed... He, he made his debut today. Yeah, he struggled, uh, he right? Made, I mean, yeah, the 10-8 score the the line scoreline the 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 score would maybe speak to that, even though yeah. the Dodgers are coming back here. Yeah. So it, it's just kind of funny that your two stars that are supposed to be your star pitchers are... <laughs> struggling a little bit. Fon Sponsorelli says, "Hopefully, Shohei didn't have the username Shohei Otani one <laughs> to hide his uh, to hide his bets." Shout out, Kayshawn. He's got to be smart. Guy, um, so a fun show today, and, and we got the coaches coming on as well. Coach Betrina, eight a.m., and uh, hopefully, Coach Jay Johnson sometime in that second hour as well. Um, coming up next, let's get to some spring ball players meeting with the media. Some interesting quotes about how things are changing, especially defensively. So uh, keep it locked right here on OTB. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Go to centralplumbing.org, centralplumbing.org. Uh, 9258 is the number if you need somebody um, who is going to, well, you need somebody to fix your pipes, okay? Uh, and and it, could, it could be anything, right? Any plumbing issue. Um, they've, they've been at it for 50 years. The license bond insured. They've got 24-7 emergency service. If it's a weekend, weekday, holiday, you know, nighttime, whatever. Um, and they got flat rate pricing. So there's no surprise or hidden fees just jacking up the bill on the back end. And you're like, what the hell is this, man? So your one-stop plumbing shop, but it's not just repairs. Centralplumbing.org. It is not just repairs. They can remodel as well. They can do it at your home or your business. So if you have a main bathroom, if you have a guest bathroom, or if you own a business and you have 10 restrooms, like they can come in and they can fix it up. The fleet is ready to go. You can find that information on their website, centralplumbing.org. Also, give them a call to set it up, 225-925-8552. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com.
So join me for a Thursday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Rouse's Luke Johnson on the Saints, Joe Healy talking SEC baseball, Chris Blair on the Tigers, and March Madness. Hunt Palmer Show, one of three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yeah, I'm definitely down. Uh, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. We're going to craft a squad ride futures bet coming up later today um, for the NCAA tournament. Uh, shoot, what else was I about to say? Hmm. I forgot. Oh, yeah. As Jake pointed out during the break, happy, happy, uh, happy vasectomy day. Yep. To all the boys getting snipped up today. Uh, I forgot about this. So why is this vasectomy day? Because today is the start of the NCAA tournament, and it is the most reserved scheduled vasectomy day in the country. Damn. It is the hardest day if you want to have the procedure done. Of any day of the year, it is the Thursday of the opening day of March Madness. Uh, if if you want to get your vast deferent snipped, um, I would say go ahead and like if you know you're going to, you you need to do this months in advance. So you you could actually schedule it for next year already today. If 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 you're someone that likes to plan uh, that far ahead, um, of course I've already had mine. Shout out Dr. Cockrell, getting me right. Um. Yeah, I, I, I did mine on a name? random. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The shoe fits. I know, I know. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that. Uh, good luck to everybody. Good luck to everybody. I, I hope, I hope you enjoy. I thought mine was gonna be a little more chill than it was. You know, I, I, I was so excited to just rewatch Lord of the Rings all weekend, and I actually feel, uh, I feel, ended up feeling like a little sick. I think I ended up uh, laying down just in bed most of the time. But but then again, I don't have a TV in the bedroom. So maybe that would have been tight. I have a TV in the bedroom and be able to just like watch March Madness all day and gamble and whatnot. Um, shout out to the boys and the boys that will no longer be produced because you're cutting the boys today. So I had no idea that they don't put you to sleep when you do that. No, no. That is terrifying. It's actually not that scary. Okay. It's just more funny and awkward. And, and look, they'll give you like, you know, something to take away any anxiety or relax you or whatnot. But I found the whole process to be very funny. <laughs> um, the nurse coming in and and prepping you, uh, you know, moving you to the side and taping and and then basically like creating a little shrine um, to, your, to, your, to your testicles as you get them like ready to go. Like the, there's a little like towel square where they're just like on display. Then you're very much awake. So the doctor's making great, small talk as you're uh as it's all going like down exposed. yeah maybe you get like the slightest burning of flesh type smell at one point a little bit of feeling not too bad all right um i the, the funny the most deeply funny part to me though besides all the 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 conversation uh during um was when you leave you are still numbed up right uh so you're not hurting but you know you're bruised and hurting, so you, you, I'm I, so like I, I'm thinking like okay, like I got thick legs, right? My thighs rub together. Like if I just walk out here normal, all willy nilly, I'm gonna do some serious damage. So I was reminded of the goats that I helped castrate with my uncle as a child, where he just took a straight razor. And and just cut these things open and ripped them out, right? Yeah. And I'll never forget those goats walking away. It was so ginger. Like they, they they barely wanted to put weight on their back feet. So when I walked out of the office, you got to walk to the car and I'm sitting there like cowboy step in like legs, like, you know, way wider than my shoulders, slowly creeping. Like I'm trying not to make any noise, walking so soft. And all I could yeah. think about were all the men in the waiting room watching me and thinking like those other goats had to. Oh, my God. No, I'm next. Uh, just, just trying to be so safe and, 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 and not do any additional damage. Yeah. This is my fault. I, I got to take responsibility. <laughs> I <laughs> opened Pandora's box. Fault. Yeah. I can't this help it. This is all dude. my it's, fault. It's one I of was the just most, saying, okay. Hey, today's the day. Right. I didn't think we were going to get, I don't know that we got that great detail when it happened. <laughs> 
It's so deeply funny to me, the walking out. I will never forget it because I just remember laughing and thinking like, you're next. As, as like I was making eye contact with the guys in the waiting room, gingerly waddling after having been fixed. Yeah. Um, so shout out to everybody Being getting fixed. a vasectomy. Uh, it's not, you know. You're not broken. Uh, I mean, look, I, I thought, you know, I, th- I thought it was, I, I've, I, I think it's been a very positive experience overall uh, for me. And look, when it's for you, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But whenever you get there, you'll know. What do you think? It, you think it's for me? Um, I think you don't think it's for you. So no. Exactly. Because that is all that, uh, that is all that matters. That's right. At the end of the day. Um, all right. Let's get to some of this uh, spring football. <laughs> what a sound. transition. Uh, maybe we should like throw a floater in here. Uh, maybe go to like a little Coleman roofing and construction, ColemanRoof.com. uh, innovation, integrity, the most reliable and respected roofing company in Louisiana, but most importantly, or maybe not most importantly, but as important, the most complete roofing company in Louisiana, any type of job, commercial or residential, they got you any type of roof you're installing. They have major, um, or they have certified installers for all the major brands, right? Uh, geographically, it's not just Louisiana. It's anywhere in the Gulf South region. And it's any size project. And it's the interiors as well, right? Like, I keep telling you about that. But so you have, like, water damage or something. They don't just fix the roof. They're going to fix your drywall, your insulation, whatever. A tree falls in the house. They fix it all. Coleman Roofing and Construction. So why choose Coleman? Go to ColemanRoof.com. You can look at what the customers say right there. Some incredible testimonials uh coleman roof and construction that for 40 years y'all coleman roof.com all right so uh the players met with the media yesterday and i want to get some enough sound i want to get some greg pin sound on the defense but let's start with some mason taylor sound talking about garrett nussmeyer here is uh taylor speaking on nussmeyer stepping into a leadership role definitely stepped into the role right away and i think um that's big for us because right after the bowl game um, and like I think you guys knew, Coach Kelly said about the player-led team. He's 100% right. Nusses came in and um, took this team upon himself, and he's taking the offense to do extra throwing, watching extra film, and all that stuff. So he's taking the team with him, and I think that's something we need. So Nuss immediately uh, taking the, the the reins of this team, and he was asked about this. This is Nuss too. How do you take over uh, as a leader? These are guys I've been around for a long time. Um, you know, these are guys that I spent a lot of time with. And, you know, we, we've just built relationships over time, and, and it's easy when it's, when, it, when it's done that way. Um, you know, I think that's important, you know, especially in my position in playing quarterback. You know, it's having relationships with your teammates. Um, so, you know, we spend time on the weekends together. We do whatever. Um, and you know, I think that's where it starts. It's, it's building relationships with those guys. Jake, what about that? Um, do you do you because basically he would go on, his, you know, he's talking about hanging out on the weekends, getting together with the boys. Um, with all the leaders that you've been a part of, right? Uh, does it help if there's an actual off the field relationship? I don't think there's any question about it. I don't think there's any question about it. Um, being with Flynn in college, yep. Obviously, we all hung out together. Even a young freshman, T. Bob A. Bear, somehow found his way yeah. into some of the house parties. And so, like, I think that helps you. Me jokes uh, in the NFL. I, I think. You know, being around the quarterbacks off the field and and learning each other, all that's important. Y- even in Denver, like Peyton Manning was great at it. Like Peyton yeah. Manning was, hey, I'm going to take the veteran guys out. I'm going to take some guys on offense that I think need some veteran leadership out. Even John Fox, the head coach, would go with us. Oh wow! Like I'd never been a part of a dynamic like that. And so you do all those things, T. Bob, because once you get on the field, then like you kind of speak the same language, and you don't have to have as much verbiage when you speak the same language. Like it's a look, it's a quick hand signal. It's a nod. It's something like that. It's because, like, hey, we have spent so much time. I kind of know your mannerisms. I know what you're looking for me to do. And I think you get those type of things done when you hang out away from football. Um, I mean, I would agree. I think uh, on the offensive line, that's always been something that um, I felt is critical as well uh, because it's it's a group where you're working so much in concert with one another where, yeah, you want to reach that point where, like, you're getting at the – communication is um, almost happening on a subconscious level. Like, it doesn't have to be vocal. Uh, Here's what Nuss had to say about kind of living up to the expectations of of, of last season. 
2023-2024 LSU football team is gone. It's no longer. Um, it's now us and it's our team. And, you know, it doesn't matter that we won 10 games and whatever in back-to-back -back years. It, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, if we go 5-5 five and five or 5-7, and seven, whatever it adds up to this year, like, it, it doesn't matter. It's about what we want to be and, and what we want to do this year and, you know, the, the level and the standard that we are holding ourselves to. Uh, an easy answer, but the correct answer there in terms of this being a new team. And speaking of 10 wins, thus eight, uh, I very, very forward here about what the expectation is going forward. If you ask any of us that, we'll tell you, we, we don't believe that that's the standard anymore. You know, going into year three, you know, in this system, not even on the field, but off the field and, and how we do things on a daily basis, how we act, how we move around this building, how we do things outside of this building, it, it's all changed. And we hold ourselves to the standard to where we believe, like I said, 10 wins is not enough anymore. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, we have to win a national championship. That's not how we think, but it's about the little things. It's about doing the little things the right way. And that leads to a championship culture. So I, I find that answer to be pretty fascinating, not just because it is bold, right? It, it, that, that's not an easy answer. That's not shying away. That is being very clear cut about what the expectation is going into year three. But more so than anything, Jake, uh, I remember watching, what was it? The, uh, the, the, the path? The, the the LSU Gold documentary a couple of years. Was it, the pro, it was about the process. I think it was called The Path. I don't know why I'm blanking, but I did a pod on it. But... Um, it was all about breaking down Brian Kelly's process, but it was at the very beginning, right? And it was all about creating uh, habits, these small, daily, um, positive actions that you engage in so consistently that be, they become second nature, they become habitual. And at the beginning, it was like we talked about, uh, the coach, like everybody's having to learn, the upper class, everybody's having to learn and the coaches are having to teach. Even the coaches are learning it as well. Uh, now you have reached the point where, look, nussmeyer has been doing this for well over two years, as has this team. So it, it, it's no longer learning. It is becoming second nature. And that's exactly what he's getting at right there. And instead of the young guys and the old guys learning, it is now player-led transference of information, as it is the veterans uh, saying, look, this is how we do things around here. And this is what's going to be expected of you. And so to hear Nuss so casually and um, almost reflexively sounding like Brian Kelly did three years ago when he took over, I think speaks to uh, the process really starting to take root here. And you can tell like when you go over to the building, the process is still something that the messaging is on the wall and it's something that they want to get across, but you're right. It becomes a situation where the players start to tell the young players about the process and what is expected there because they've been molded in it now. Like Garrett nussmeyer has been here for multiple years. I mean, he's been here since 21, but he's been here since Brian Kelly takes over. So he's going into year four. And so he can tell the young players about that process. I mean, it's the same thing like for me, like I played for different head coaches here, but one constant was Tommy Moffitt. And yep. you knew what Moffitt expected in the weight room. And so whenever a young player came in, you tried to help them out. You tried to lead them down the path and understand what Tommy Moffat expected in the weight room and what you had to do, right? You, you tell them the bare minimum, but you say you got to go above the bare minimum yep. because like, if you want to succeed in this program, you have to succeed in this weight room. It's the same situation. And now like the coaches will still do their part, but they don't have to do as much because of players like Nussmeyer and Mason Taylor and Greg Penn, all these older players who have been through it, they've been molded by it as well because this is the head coach that they know. The um, and 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 Jake Flint, you know, Jake Flint's been there uh, since since Brian Kelly got there. So uh, although I can't speak to Flint's uh, culture, I'm sure that they've adopted it in the same way that um, and that he reinforces the same way that Tommy Moffat did uh, in our day there. All right. Uh, when I get back, uh, let's go ahead and get to some of the Greg Penn sound in regards to, uh, Blake Baker and this defensive staff, uh, youtube.com slash one Oh four five ESPN. If you want to get involved, uh, in the chat, come hang out, whatever you can go there and, uh, hit the like button. If you are on YouTube, subscribe, help, please the algorithmic gods that rule our existence more OTB. Coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Community Steel Company, communitysteelco.com. Right there in Gonzales, Louisiana, man. Community Steel going to get you right. They have, uh, look, they're live. They're local. They have an actual human sales team boots on the ground that you can meet, form relationships with. And whether you're purchasing like a 
steel building for like a personal need, like, you know, covering up an RV or something in, in your yard or um, business need. You need purlin tubing, steel buildings, sheet metal. Uh, those relationships allow Community Steel to better serve your needs regardless of what they may be. You're also going to get the strongest price point and you can see and touch the quality product before you buy. It's all there. Gonzalez Community Steel Company. And they're already open. They've been open, in fact, for 32 minutes. So if you want to go see them, they are there early. You can go do all the things that T-Bob just mentioned there in Gonzales, Louisiana. Go to the website, communitysteelco.com, top right corner of the website. Click on Community Steel, pull up a map of exactly where they're located. You can always call them as well at 225-647-2020. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. The light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies. Moscona inviting you to join us for Thursday's AFR. Kendall Rogers of D1 Baseball is with us. We'll take a look at the weekend ahead in college baseball. And are the Pelicans real title contenders? We'll discuss 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening, yo? Filling out my bracket. Wow, suddenly stumbled into Auburn and UNC in the Final Four. Okay, Let's see where this thing goes. Um, I'm just choosing at random. I don't know. Also, I used to go to UNC basketball camp. Well, everybody when I was a kid. chooses at random. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. I went off the vibes. Uh, vibes are good. No as stats, good a, just good vibes. As, good as a, um, good of a system as anyway. Yeah. As any, I would say. As like we talked about yesterday, the paradox of knowledge. 
when you know too much, it can almost be harder to choose because you know who should, in theory, be better and who should, in theory, win. So I need to look at some of these future odds because we're going to have a team OTB future team. Uh, we're going to select the team. We'll all agree to the team, and then we can place whatever you want to place on it, 10 bucks, 5 bucks, 25 bucks. And so we can all kind of have a rooting interest since LSU is not in the tournament. I agree. I agree. Uh, I'm going to tell you this. Speaking of vibes, I saw that video of Nebraska with the Japanese Steph Curry. And so I'm putting Nebraska in my Final Four. So just be, be well, prepared for that. I mean, we all got robbed of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar from Indiana State not being in the tournament. They scored 101 points in the NIT last oh, night. Oh, he didn't make the tournament? No, they didn't make the tournament. Oh, no, lame. Yeah, and Virginia's out here scoring 14 in a full half of basketball. Damn. But we can't get the Sycamores in there. I would have loved to see Cream. I mean, he too had one of those, that, that random highlight package from a couple of weeks ago that just took over the internet. Uh, all right, let's get to some of this Greg Penn sound uh, for media availability yesterday. Uh, this is Penn 2. This is uh, him speaking on how they're trying to build a new identity under Blake Baker. Yeah, I think we're trying to build an identity of what we want to be. Uh, Coach Baker does a great job bringing energy to the room and to the whole defense as a whole. Us playing with fire, playing with enthusiasm, just trying to form an identity. Guys need to understand we're playing a whole new defense, so the guys are learning new plays and stuff like that. Um, now, what about uh, how the guys are adjusting to Blake Baker? He's a great, great person. First, great guy, family guy, fun to be around, great guy to play for. He loves all of us. Uh, he's hard on us. So, I mean, he pushes us hard and things like that. So, us in the linebacker room, I think we adjust adjusted well to him coming in and uh, a new face, hearing a different voice. I think guys have adjusted well. And, uh, I mean, I think it's going to be a great year. And then here's pin five. This is about the new defensive staff as a whole. For me, it's a couple familiar faces because they were here my freshman year. So, I mean, it's fun. I mean, those coaches are great. Having C. Ray back, Coach Davis is a, he, yeah, I mean, you'll see, but he's a, he's a guy he'll get on you if you're messing up things like that. But he's a great coach, Coach Baker. I mean, Coach Jake Olsen, or Coach Olsen, all those guys are great. They're really pushing us. I think that hearing new voices has been good for guys. Being able to just play and not think as much has been really good. So I, I got my wires crossed somewhere, Jake, because um, I didn't actually find the quote uh, that I was looking for where um, – uh, Greg Penn talks about the new approach of LSU's defense this year. Uh, basically speaking on how the last couple of years, it was very read and react under Matt House, whereas, um, and that was to try to avoid mistakes, try to avoid busts, right? A very almost um, NFL sort of mindset, right? We're, we're, we're not going to make mistakes and we're going to rely on uh, our, our, our ability to, if we avoid mistakes, then we should be good enough uh, and our physical ability to to be a good defense, right? Well, that ended up not being the case. Now, Penn talks about how it's all about individual talent and pressing the issue um, on offenses to force them to be perfect, right? And I think that makes more sense in a in a in a, in a college game uh, because this is not the NFL. Like you won't always get punished for leaving guys open if you can get after the quarterback and terrify him, like. Like it's 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 kind of like the baseball theory that Maneri used to have, where I'm sending him home and you got to make the play. Like like if it, if it's gonna be close, yeah. I'm gonna send him home and you got to relay the throw, you got to make the tag, like you got to make the play. I I like that when it comes to college. So the exact quote is quote It really helps to have Coach Baker. He gets on you when you have more in the tank. It's a great new voice for us to turn the page from last year. We're trying to move past that and form a new identity. Coach Baker always says his defense is based on getting TFLs to get the offense behind the chain, so that'll help us get to more third and longs so guys like Perk can rush and get to the passer. So I love that philosophically as a change for this LSU defense. You know, it is important to point out something that Greg mentioned there. He was there when Blake Baker was here the first yeah, time. Yeah, true. And so kind of going back to what we're talking about with sharing the process through players and not just coaches, well, he can share to the Weeks brothers and Harold Perkins and whoever yeah. else is in that room his experience with Blake Baker. And it was a good experience. Like I've, I've talked with Greg Pan, I've talked with Blake Baker about that. It was a good experience for him. He was a young football player, and so he can share that, right? And T-Bob, you know this as well. When you have a new coach that comes in and you get the most veteran guy in the room, it's like, hey, no, I, I vouch for this coach. I promise if we listen mm -hmm. to this coach – and we do what he says, we are going to be better because of it. 
And then you'll, you don't have to go through that period where you're trying to figure each other out maybe as much and you're trying to yeah. trust each other as much. And so him being here the first time that Blake Baker was here, I do think is important. Also, um, look, I thought, I, I don't know if I've ever really heard Greg Penn do too many interviews up to this point. Um, and, I, and, and I know that he's been named a, a captain on this defense. Makes sense. Senior, been there a long time. Um, yeah, very, very uh, solid in the interview format. I mean, thoughtful, legitimate answers, not just falling back on yeah. sort of, um, you know, coach speak or what they train you up on. Uh, okay, Greg Penn, I see you, bro. And I look, I would love nothing more than for Greg Penn to prove me wrong on some of my assertions about what his ceiling is, which I think is like solid, but nothing exciting. Like I would love for Blake Baker and Greg Penn to come out with a vengeance and show that, no, I've got a lot more to offer than maybe you're giving me credit for. Yeah, well, everybody in uh, the surrounding area thought that they knew who Damone Clark was. Yeah, exactly. And I knew, you knew, we all kind of knew that, you know, watch tape, that there was more in there. And Blake Baker got not only the most out of Damone Clark, he set his life up, I, I think. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I, I mean, didn't think there was, more, I didn't think there was the more in there. I've, I've, I've been very much on record, like, the the Bo Pelini Damone Clark tape was some of the worst linebacker play I'd ever seen in my entire life. Um, I knew he was a physical freak, but I just thought he didn't have it, and I was completely wrong because he ended up being incredible. And as you said, yeah, set his life up. Now he's again starting NFL guy. So uh, here's to hoping that you can accomplish similar things with this LSU group. Yeah, the thing I think that we're all waiting to see is who's going to be playing in front of. Greg Penn and the Weeks brothers, whoever's in there at linebacker, at defensive tackle. Yeah. And you heard him talk about Bo Davis. Now, I, I kind of forget that, you know, Bo Davis hasn't been here in this role because I know Bo Davis from him being a weight room yeah, intern weight room. Yeah. <laughs> when when he first got into coaching. And that's where a lot of people actually start there. Corey Raymond started, where o started. in the weight room as well yeah. like, when I was here. So, this is somebody that starts there. Now, he played at LSU, and, and everyone knows who he is, but like he hasn't been in this position, and he is a coach that will absolutely get after your ass. Well, yeah, I remember we played the audio on the show before, but him getting after all the Texas players, part of the key reason why Texas culture got a little tougher was Bo Davis. Um, I just feel for him that you go from Evan Murphy and sweat to now this group. But, hey, try to maximize it, right? Uh, for what it's worth, I was talking to somebody in the wait staff the other day and just kind of asked about, you know, who are the strongest guys in there? And, um, Will Campbell was one of the names that came up, but so was yeah. Jacoby and Guillory. And speaking of guys that are maybe poised to take a big step, Guillory's been solid, you know, a solid starter, kind of a la Greg Penn, but yeah, maybe nothing overly special. Um, and I can say that because I think that would describe my entire career. Uh, but, but, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe Bo Davis can unlock more there as well. So the, the potential of the staff, um, well, it's exciting. Uh, and, and, and we'll see, can they, what, you know, what kind of meal can they make with the ingredients they've been handed? All right, uh, let's go to break. When we get back, let's wrap up hour number one of OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. <laughs> get Gordon, get it done. Two, two, five. <clears throat> 888-8888, the G-Team. All your favorite athletes on the G-Team. Celsius women's basketball uh, team is, Coach Mulkey is, Hayden Travinsky and Alex Malazzo recently joining. Um, it's 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 just like, uh, if, if, if you love them, chances are they're on the team. Uh, and you can join the team as well. When you get in an accident, by getting Gordon and getting done, get somebody who's going to stand up the insurance companies and fight for you. Your area code, then 888-8888, and you're going to get Gordon, and he's going to get you what you deserve, getgordon.com. Go to the website. You'll see what they can do for you in the courtroom. Pass client results. You can get a consultation set up, cases that they can handle. And if you want to see what they're doing in the community or with your favorite athlete, that's where you go to get Gordon on all major social media. And if you want to pick up the phone and give them a call, remember, your area code in Louisiana, followed by 888-8888. Get Gordon and get it done. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you.
the best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip Like cypress stumps, your fruits are planted deep inside of me. Oh, there it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further. Like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP. Field is set for the 2024 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Tune in for first round coverage Thursday night at 6 and Friday night at 6. Then catch second round coverage starting Saturday at noon and Sunday morning at 11. Right here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Finish my brag. I, I never know how these things go. It looks like a lot of momentum got going, and Tennessee ended up winning the Natty. So there you go. Tennessee. Yeah, I don't know what happened, okay. dude. It just they just kept winning. Yeah, you know. I think actually the bracket I made, they're in my final four. I got Auburn, UNC, Nebraska, and Tennessee. That's called expertise, right there, boys. Um, just wait, just wait. Uh. <clears throat> I don't remember who I had in my final four. It was like Houston, UConn. I forget who the other two were. Uh, and then I have Houston winning it all. Shout out to Grambling State. We mentioned at the top of the show, but comes back from 14 down in the second half to beat Montana State 88-81 in OT. This is a program that was 0-28 a decade ago. And now they just become the ninth HBCU to win in the NCAA tournament. How about the story of Jamil Kofert? He didn't play in the SWAC championship. He didn't play in the first half of last night's game. Then he drops 19 in the second half in OT due to a little, a coach, a little coaching adjustment where they wanted to get a little more size on the court. Um, I'm not going to you know, pretend like I'm any expert in this regard, right? But um, it's always nice to see uh, the boot. Yep. succeed okay so shout out to Grand Blue State now they get Purdue here's a little fun fact Purdue has lost to double digit seeds in each of the past three NCAA tournaments yep let's go yeah Oof, Matt Painter's hoping that that doesn't happen again because it is certainly something that is being talked about it's been talked about over the last couple of years uh you know what Grambling is though T uh no three one great that's right 
Should known that. You definitely should have known that. Yep. I thought you knocked that out of the park. Um, no, I didn't know. I, I thought I thought maybe you were gonna have like some like record or stat or something. That's uh, also fair. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Um, LSU's got a big recruiting weekend coming up this weekend as well. Some recruits on campus. Um, a trio of great offensive linemen. Now Harlem Barry is going to be there as well, but you got Solomon Thomas, Jake. Remember, you just got a commitment from the number one interior offensive lineman in Tyler Miller. You now have the number two interior offensive lineman in Solomon Thomas coming to town. Um, he's committed to FSU for what it's worth, but he's still taking a bunch of visits. You have Micah DeBose, the number nine interior offensive lineman, a top 150 player. Uh, he's been kind of leaning LSU. He's he's tasting the flavors of two Tigers as it's between Auburn and LSU, but but there's been a lot of smoke that maybe, maybe he's leaning towards Baton Rouge and... Um, the, on three has him on quote commitment watch coming up uh, this weekend, and then you have Carius Kern, the number five interior offensive lineman, the number one prospect in Arkansas, who is currently committed to the Razorbacks. But Brad, I mean Brad Davis, look, we said nobody has done a better job in this Kelly era than as Brad Davis reshaping that offensive line group, and that's something that Kelly's been good at his entire career. And so three big time prospects. Coming in this weekend, too committed, but we'll see. Um, if I mean, if you land Debose and one of these other two guys, and you've already got Tyler Miller, like yes, the 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 pantry, the cupboard just remains full. Um, you're also gonna have cornerback Jabari Antoine in town. He's already committed, and then you got a couple of big time safeties in Anquan Fagans and uh, Fahim Delane, who are, uh, for what it's worth, predicted to Auburn and predicted to. Ohio State. Uh, but if you could steal away one of those yeah. guys, and again, Corey Raymond going to do his best to accomplish that. I had someone ask me the other day uh, out there in the wild, T-Bob, about all these commitments that they're getting in this class. Like, are they going to have room for all these commits? You have to remember the rules are no longer the same. You can sign as many of these guys as you want. It's not the hard 25 anymore. It's 85 scholarship players. So you're going to have the ability to fill your roster with some of the top talent that we're talking about. And you have some deficiencies on your roster. We've talked about those. Now you want to fill some of those up this year through the portal, but those portal guys that you're going to bring in probably going to be one year rental type guys. Yeah. And you're going to fill your depth through a class like this. And so, yeah, if they keep coming, you keep signing these five star, four star guys that are top at their position, top in their state, you know. Also, it's, you don't, it's hard to turn them down. Yeah, I want to say you don't have like a crazy amount of commits either, right? I mean, you I think you're it just feels like they're just get, continuing to get just, more they have like and the more highest and they're quality. leading. Yeah, yeah, they just have the highest quality of commitments that I've maybe ever ever seen. Um All right, hour 1 in the book, so be on the lookout for that little recruit going down this week. Going to kick off hour 2 with coach Beth Torina. I still want to talk some Pell's magic. Uh, we can dive back into the Shohei Otani story. Got some NCAA tournament talk coming up as well. Munchies, big deal or no big deal. A lot on the docket for the final two hours. YouTube.com slash 104.5 ESPN. Hit the like button if you're watching there. More OTB coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. RejuveMeMedical.com. Restore me, refuel me, rejuve me. You want to feel younger, better? Faster, stronger. You got in like facial aging, mood and memory problems, insomnia, whatever the case may be. These are all the untreated effects of aging. You can treat them. You can feel young, good. Like the cock of the walk. The proud peacock. Chest puffed out. Tail feathers shining. Like St. Peter's? Exactly. Are they peacocks? Yeah. There you go. Peter. Go to Rejuve Me today, get that consultation, get your labs drawn, it's free consultation, and then let them customize the plan for you. Again, maybe it's HRT, maybe it's a glutide, maybe it's not. Maybe it's something as simple as B vitamin shots. What I can guarantee you is you're going to feel better and younger. Rejuve Me Medical, restore me, refuel me, rejuve me. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SEA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you.
Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. on Thursday, March 21st. Today in Baton Rouge, expect rainy skies with a high of 66. An hour two of today's show, LSU softball coach Beth Tarina joins us at 8 a.m. And LSU baseball coach Jay Johnson later in the hour. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studios, starts now. Where do we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo! What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. OTB, hour number two. It is Thursday at 8 a.m. And every single Thursday at 8, we are lucky enough to get to talk to your LSU head softball coach, Coach Beth Tarina. Uh, coach, what's going on? How are we feeling this Thursday? Uh, have we hit the road to Como yet? No, we are leaving this afternoon. Cool. So we're getting packed up, getting everybody ready. So, um, look, thus far, every time we've done this, uh, it has been an unmarred season, right? Now, obviously, <laughs> this last weekend, it was a series that had some interesting um kind of uh, peaks and valleys where a great, you know, a great win in game number one, yet another shutout for this excellent staff and, and defense. Uh, and then looking like game number two was in the bag before it ends up slipping away. And then in game three falling. So serving the first losses on the season, um, how do you feel your team in the interim dealt with uh, an experience that they had not had to this point? Yeah, it was tough. Definitely wasn't our you know, how we wanted it to go, how yeah. we drew it up. But, um, I mean, I, I, I talked with some of the leadership and some of the older kids. Taylor told me, I think we forgot how to lose. <laughs> and I was like, cool, let's forget again. Hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, I, I mean, I think we played bad on Sunday, and then we got beat on Monday. So we needed to win the Sunday game, and then we were going to get beat at some point. It was inevitable, you know. Um, it's too long a season, 56 games, to be perfect. So 
um, the key is just getting back on track and resetting at this point this week. Well, and, and, and that's what I wanted to ask you about because, um, you know, in, 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 in football, we always called it uh, one snap and clear, right? Like, you don't want to let uh, – you, you and, and, and if you expand that into a more macro view, like, you never want to let one disappointment turn into another. And because this is SEC softball, uh, there is no rest for the weary. You can't feel bad for yourself because now you're going on the road to take on a top 15 team in the entire country in Mizzou. Um What's your process or technique for getting your team to to flush it and move on? Well, we spent a lot of time around the table, the staff trying to decide, you know, what our next move was. And honestly, we didn't feel like we were maybe in the best spot even after Saturday night's game. We felt like, you know, we were in a little bit of a slide and maybe needed to do some things different. So we were kind of already having these discussions. So, um, you know, we, we debated the old, do you treat them at, gentle and have confidence or do you stay tough on them and we just decided to stay true to our process keep being tough keep trying to make them durable mentally tough and Mm -hmm. that would pay off in the long run they're gonna have to be tough to win something so um that's kind of the conversation and that's the direction we went and i think the team's been up for it the whole way coach what was it on sunday's game that you said it you know obviously didn't go your way and there was things that you wish you did a little bit better what were some of those things that you highlighted to try to get better from Sunday's game? Because Monday was a little bit different, but what about Sunday's game? Well, unfortunately, we've played such clean defense, you know, throughout. And just it, it's tough to, when you're playing a talented team, to overcome errors and things like that. And then we didn't score enough runs and make some adjustments offensively to, you know, make up for the for the defense. So we, we played bad on Sunday. We, we played bad. Mm. Um, and then, like I said, Monday, they were better. They, they came out and beat us. And I think we did exactly what you just said, is we let loss one turn into loss two by yeah. trying too hard to make up for it. Like, we wanted to win too badly at that point. Well, and, and Coach, there's been a, um, there's been a lot of uh, positive stories thus far from an individual perspective. Uh, <laughs> but one of the surprises, kind of outside looking in, has been Carly Petty. Now, I know... Um, she's been dealing with a bone fracture that kind of uh, slowed her incredibly fast start. Um, and look, she she's great defensively, um, uh, but her at the plate. I mean, you're talking about a career 272 hitter that all of a sudden uh, is leading the team with a 450 average. Um, I'm not. I'm not. Look, I'm not saying that's where it's going to end, right? But 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 how, what do you feel? What were the the elements that led to Petty having such a such a massive leap uh, over an off season. Well, so good to get her back. I mean, I call her the hype woman. She's just like the person you want on defense because she's like constantly like cheering for you and pulling for you and just celebrating all the little things. She's awesome. Um, but I think she's just making better swing decisions. Pulling out of the zone a lot last year had some high strikeout numbers, and this year just isn't doing it. Just she just doesn't bite on things out of the zone just attacking the pitches she wants to attack. And she really is having a great year for us. Um, It's been fun seeing her succeed. All right, Coach, obviously you're playing an SEC series, so it's going to be a ranked opponent, and that's going to be Missouri this week and traveling to Como. And it tells you how strong the SEC is. Missouri's only lost six games all year, and four of them have been in the SEC. But kind of an early look at Missouri and what you expect there in Como. Yeah, they have a really talented team. They they have been having a great year, like you said. Um, they have a power arm on the mound, 70-plus miles an hour. Um, I think everybody does at this point. Um, but they also have a really old offense like we do. The top of their lineup is really old. A couple of the best hitters in the conference um, at the top of their lineup. So, as always, I say it every week, but we will have our work cut out for us. We'll have to play our best game, and that's literally every single weekend in the SEC. So. Yeah, and then look, sometimes those challenges can be kind of, um, you know, not not the worst thing, right? Because it doesn't allow you to dwell on the past. Uh, so when 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 you you mentioned um, the defense being so good until it wasn't kind of Sunday uh, coming out of the Ole Miss series, uh, what 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 did you identify as the kind of main uh, areas of self scouting like improvement that you want to see? I think we got a little passive. Um, you know, weren't attacking pitches in the zone the way we needed to. Um, I, we've prided ourselves on being at the top of the country in swing decisions. So we're like swinging at the right pitches, right? So, um, and we felt like we kind of got away from that at times. Um, so I think like we've gone back to that a little bit and just maybe a little reset, worry a little more about ourselves this week and send the opponent. 
mm-hmm. um, and trying to make sure we're doing the things that got us to the spot that we were in when things were going really well. Well, um, that's going to be going down tonight, 5 p.m. LSU. No. At, what, what's that? Tomorrow. 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 Oh, it's Don't not. It's, oh my, no, no, tonight. dude. My bad, dude. I keep Don't thinking. Don't make me play a game. No, 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 no. I got a nice dinner. I got the things, you know. I've made this mistake, I think, three or four times. I keep thinking it's Friday. I don't know why. I guess I'm just in, like, a really good mood. Because the NCAA tournament today, nobody works today. That's Yes, maybe that's it. Like, the weekend vibes are already here because everybody's going to skip work and watch basketball all day. Um, See, I'm like a day. I'm the day the other way because we had the Monday night, so I'm like at Wednesday today. Yeah. So I'm yeah, like that's weird. That is odd. Yes. Uh, so a short week there, right back no, to work. No midweek game, nothing in the middle of the week. So yeah, it's probably a, an odd week for you, Coach. Yes, next week we have a really short week because we have a midweek and then we have the Thursday series. So <laughs> really short. Okay, so excuse me. Tomorrow. 5 p.m. Yeah. at Mizzou. Then we got Saturday at 2, Sunday at 1, as uh, this LSU team looks to bounce back. Still 4-2 in the SEC, second in the league right now. Coach Serena, thank you so much. Cannot wait to see what the team does this weekend, and uh, best of luck on the road. Thank you so much. Great to talk with you guys. Absolutely. Thanks, Always, every week, we thank you. Um, all right, uh, coming up next. Here on OTB, uh, there's a lot of different directions we could go. We talk some NCAA tournament. Uh, we get in the Shohei Otani story we wanted to. We now know LSU's 2025 SEC opponents. Um, some stuff there, potentially. Got a scratchy nose. <clears throat> More Off the Bench coming up next. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge, All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com, All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. That's the website, okay? But, uh, you go see him, Alva Airline Goodwood, if you wanted to. You go see what they got, you know, go, go deal with the sales team. Or you can go to the website, you can look at the incredible deals that they have, get an idea of maybe what you're looking for. Um, you can also order right there online at All-Star Toyota Express. Uh, so, like, look, if you need a new vehicle, Toyota certified used vehicle where you still get excellent warranty coverage or you just need to rent, All-Star is there for you. Um, but what if you need service, okay? You need a body shop. You got in an accident. Take your insurance claim into All-Star Toyota. All makes and models welcome, okay? Anybody come. You mentioned OTB. You get $100 towards that deductible. All-Star Toyota, Baton Rouge.com. Yeah, go to the website to check out all the vehicles they have available. No matter what you're looking for, they have got you covered. Multiple options. And you'll find them all right there. Buying new, leasing, and renting. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is. The extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further. Like vans customized for work or play. With safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded. Because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana the local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. 
Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Here's a little story I got to tell about three bad brothers you know so well. It started way back in history with that Rob, CA, and me. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening? Uh, so we got Jay Johnson coming up at 9 a.m. Uh, confirmed. So we'll hear from Coach Jay going into a big-time weekend in the box. Uh, and then on uh, snaps today, a little shameless plug, we got your guy, Bobby Carpenter. Oh, the coming general. Coming on at noon to talk a little uh, talk a little Ohio State. The old general. What are y'all doing off campus today? Just wall to wall. Do you even have off campus with the tournament going on? Not today. Okay, so just wall to wall NCAA tourney. Hell yeah, dude. Nice. Love to see it. Yep. Um. All right. Uh, speaking of this LSU baseball team, um, what do you think? Like, is mm, if if um, we're rifling through my notes here, I dropped my papers. Okay, so this weekend in the SEC, you got Florida at LSU. Mississippi State at Texas A&M. That's going to start tonight. I'm fascinated to see if State is. Uh, what's that? What's that oof for there, Taylor? Shout out Rivers. I don't know who to pull for in this series, guys. See, I we I can't. Lo- we can't have her getting too cocky and win two series in a yeah, row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also yeah. can't pull for A&M. This is a tough one for me. Um, I mean, I I'm just I I've always you know I've kind of had a soft spot for for State for a while now. Um, it definitely hurts that we've gotten our ass kicked in multiple sports here recently, but it's always screw Texas A&M. I think they might get exposed. Uh, they, so that like that like that's what I most want to yeah. see, right? Because the law of transitive sports properties, like what if Mississippi State looks really good tonight? Then I'm like, okay, you know, not so bad. Remember, Jay Johnson, when The Athletic did their giant college baseball preview, they talked to a bunch of the great coaches around the country, and they asked about, you know, who are some of the maybe, who, who's going to be the team that you think is a bit undervalued? And Jay Johnson said Mississippi State. He said that they have, you know, really good upperclassmen leadership and that people are kind of sleeping on him. Is he is 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 that going to end up being the case? Um, this series will go a long way. Like winning at home in the dude opening weekend, as we saw, being at home opening weekend was massive. But if you go on the road to A and M to Bluebell Park and and survive the the bubbles, <laughs> I mean uh, then you're legit. That's asking a lot to survive the bubble. I know. I know. Uh, actually, when she was asking me why I hate A&M, that was one of the reasons I said it. I was like, blow bubbles. Like, what are we talking about? And and to be fair, yes, my kids love bubbles. And they're generally a happy thing. But, um, God, that's lame. Ah, I just I just don't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe I'm intimidated by it because it's like it, it's just too emasculating in 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 a in a competitive sport for bubbles to be floating through the air or something. It's something incongruous about it that I don't appreciate. They didn't come up with that. West Ham does it. They've been doing it forever. Yeah. And when's the last time West Ham won a title? 
probably the same time A and M did. Exactly. <laughs> Give me East Turkey any day. Um, okay. Well, A and M's <laughs> Friday night starter isn't bad. Ryan Jesus. Prager. Uh, no. The, well, the, so so that's why this series is fascinating because A and M coming out of preseason was viewed as you know. Maybe the 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 best team, maybe the one that was going to make the most noise. They too have the excuse that LSU does, though, of being on the road. So that's why for A and M and LSU, I think this is a fascinating week in themselves mm-hmm. because it's like, okay, now you're at home. Uh, are you going to prove that the excellent baseball you displayed in the preseason is who you are, or is the SEC and the gauntlet that it represents going to continue to maybe expose you a bit and show you that you have a bit more to work on than you previously thought? Uh, so I think there's a ton on the line for LSU, arguably the most in the entire conference. I mean, looking around, maybe maybe Tennessee, Tennessee after losing in their opening series, Jake, having a 2-1 Ole Miss team coming to town. I mean, I guess there's a lot yeah. there. Or maybe Auburn. I was going to say, Auburn just got swept by Vandy. And yeah. lost to South Alabama and in the midweek. Vandy and is number three. Yeah, but... yeah. And now you got Arkansas coming to town, though. Yeah. That Oof. is true. Ooh, Auburn's that's in a... so brutal. Oof. Auburn is in a really, really rough spot here yeah. early on. I mean, it steals... it steals it feels it's at home that's what i'm saying but it feels like auburn is staring <laughs> one and five in the face yeah uh which is just not a place that's a brutal way to start that you want to be um so already god i love the sec schedule for baseball already the stakes feel so big and we're only here in weekend number two and so many teams feel like they have their back against the wall whether it's zero and three georgia a and m lsu auburn it's fantastic South Carolina one and two with a three and zero Vandy coming to town. Um, now I don't know how South Carolina is projected to be this year, um, so may, you know m- maybe not as much line as like in Auburn, but uh, yeah. So a lot of good baseball coming up this weekend. Um, I do want to remind you about Pinnacle Exterior Construction, P E C Built dot com. Shout out Pinnacle. We love uh, partnering with local business here, and Pinnacle's one of the best. If you go to PECBuilt.com, you're going to see, look, uh, the gallery that they have online is just simply fantastic. And if you need uh, uh, fences, bulkheads, pergolas, outdoor living spaces, kitchens, whatnot, um, they got you. Look at the featured uh, projects that they do. It's really, really impressive. But what about pools? It's never been easier, quicker, or more affordable to get the pool of your dreams, and it is with Pinnacle Exterior Construction. They have these spec pools where you can choose from a variety of templates. You choose little detail options around the edges, so you make the pool your own, and then after you do it, in two weeks, guys, two weeks, two weeks. I'm being dead serious here. Two weeks. Not like, I'm not saying like, I'm saying from the time you close a deal to when you're going to have a pool, it's going to be two calendar weeks. Uh, You'll have a pool, maybe even a little less. So check them out today. PECbuilt.com. Pool season around the corner. Get your body right. Get your pool installed. PECbuilt.com. Um, LSU football now knows it's uh, 2025 SEC opponents. I don't know how exciting it is, though, Jake, because all you do is flip your 2024 list. Uh, but, <laughs> but, 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 there is one element that I find interesting. But I bet you talk about it today. Uh, Are look, you doing a show? You're doing a show today? For what? Snaps? Yeah, I mean, you know, dude, I didn't, I didn't think about it. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are. I didn't think about that, really. Yeah. Um, but LSU uh, in 25 at Death Valley, uh, at home at least, I should say, because you'll be visiting another Death Valley. Uh, at home, you're going to get Arkansas, Florida, South Carolina, A&M. Pretty easy home schedule. Here's where I think the interesting portion of this conversation comes in. Jake, you got a brutal road schedule in 25. You're going to go to Alabama, to Ole Miss, to Oklahoma, and then it's to Vandy, but out of conference, you're going to Clemson. Alabama, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, Clemson, all on the road in one year? Damn, son. And then USC neutral. Uh, oh, is that right? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about Wait, that. Wait, Oh, I'm sorry, 25. Yeah, it's 25. Sorry. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm yeah, talking 25, but still, that's, I mean, bro, that is a brutal road schedule there. Yeah, certainly depending on, it, you know, where Oklahoma is in that because I think we expect Alabama that's with true. the board to still be a very solid football team, maybe not to the standard of Nick Saban, but still a really, really good football team. And then Ole Miss, if Lane Kiffin continues to thrive, if Brent Venables can get Oklahoma, 
back to close to their standard, and you got to go to Clemson. Now, we don't know what Clemson is going to look like. We don't know what the future of that program really looks like just because of the things that they're not doing. But still, like even if they're where they're at right now, it's still, yeah, like it's, still, it's still a tough road trip, right? It like it's not going to be easy no matter what. I'm not saying that you're going to be facing a New Year Six Clemson, but but you open up the season there, so I mean you're not going to have a lot of time to figure things out. And so it's that's going to be, be your first game. Yeah, it's your first game, August 30th of 2025. I mean, look, you know me, I love big energy first games, and I would much rather the school that I like watch and uh, take entertainment from. I want them to challenge themselves the first game of the season instead of just like coming out with a cupcake. But if they're that, that has been the biggest mar that has been the biggest uh, negative of the Brian Kelly era thus far is they just really don't seem to know exactly what they have or come out very prepared for, for either game. Number one, and maybe it's because you're going against Florida state that was going through a Renaissance and did know, like, I don't know exactly. Like it doesn't help, but but, um, yeah, that, that's been the biggest disappointment. It's something that you would certainly want to see fixed here uh, over the next two years. So, like we always talk about in the SEC, it's where's your gauntlet? Where's your three-game stretch and how it's formatted? Where did these games fall? Because we know at Clemson's going to open the season. You come back home against Louisiana Tech. But then where is the Alabama game and where is the Florida game at home kind of situated? Where's the Oklahoma game? Is it going to be the last game of the year? Are they going yeah. to truly make that? A thing because if it is, and between road trips to Alabama and to Ole Miss, you've got Vanderbilt at home and you got Western Kentucky at home. Like, well, that helps. But if you've got a three game stretch where you're Florida at home, you're at Ole Miss by week at Alabama, then that's brutal. Yeah. It just depends on how they format it and where they place it because that to me is always going to be the key factor in how I grade a schedule. Yes, we know the opponents, we know the teams, but where and when do you play those teams? True, true, true. Um, and the more you can break up those road trips, the better. Though, again, with that many on the schedule, it's going to be tough. Uh, it, it's going to be tough to think that you could that like to find any easy combo. Yeah. What would? Uh, who are you opening up with this year? Why am I blanking? USC. That's USC in and Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. Duh, USC and Vegas. Vegas, baby. We're gonna be there, Bob. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. We're doing a live show from Spearmint Rhino. Can't wait. I'll be there too. Um, I thought we were doing it from the Flamingo. Oh, we're not? Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to do it from Steve Aoki's pool on top of uh, Wet Republic. Ugh. I don't like that at all. Such yeah, a funny so th- name. This year is, as we know, SC in Vegas. You come back home and play Nichols. You go on the road to South Carolina. You come back home against UCLA, also South Alabama, before you get a bye before Ole Miss, which again, like you love to have a buy, kind of a nice little reset after that five game stretch before you play a good Ole Miss team at home. And Tiger State is going to be, certainly if you're undefeated, will be at an 11 for that one. Yeah, that's going to be a good boy. Um, Bunny Money, I saw a pick of Blake Baker rocking cleats on the sideline. It, do we have confirmation of that, Taylor? I feel like you would know. Is, is he pulling a full Harbaugh here? Uh, I saw the picture. I'll pull it back up. I didn't, I didn't okay. look at the cleats, but okay. I'll. Let's see. Uh, Jake, how do we feel about coaches with cleats on the sideline? Got to move around. I like it. Yeah. It's locked Got to be light on your feet. Guys moving ready around. to go. Hey, cleats in grass. Oh. Cleats in grass. Wow, this baseball game getting very exciting. Uh, bottom of the eighth, and it looks like the Dodgers are the two-run single now down 12-11. Two outs. Big this time, This baseball game Mookie. has been going Mookie on forever. Bets. Big time by Mookie. He's big time. Big time bets. Yeah. Shohei's Dodgers. username. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Thank you. that was Thank very, you. very, very good. Thank I've never you. been more proud of you Thanks. than I am in this moment right now. <laughs> big time, big time bets. Show his username. He also hit a big time home run a couple of innings ago. Mookie did. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn. Just enough. How the hell do you get to second base? Oh, because they threw it home. Show right. definitely going to hit a two run bomb right here, by the way. Oh, and Show he's up. I Dude, didn't do he it. ripped it. Oh. Aww. <laughs> oh, Shohei distracted, distracted. Uh, he bet for the Padres. Yep, exactly, dude. Couldn't can't have the Dodgers winning. He's got too much. I mean, I think his over already hit. Though. Yeah, I was gonna say. This is what sucks for Shohei, though. Again, he seems like the nicest guy ever, right? and yet these are now the jokes that are going to tail him um, for a long time. So I've been Them's like the, rules. the yeah. biggest Shohei fan, and man, 
I, at first I was like, we don't talk about Shohei enough. And now I'm like, okay, let's stop talking about Shohei. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's stop. Let's, let's not. Just let this story kind of just uh, yeah, die down a little disappear. bit. Go away. Um, all right. When we get back, big deal or no big deal here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Tommy's windows, doors, and siding. Okay. Look, uh, first off, GEAUXTommies.com is the website. If you want to see uh, some of the great testimonials uh, about people who have worked with Tommy before. And, um, well, look, it's right there in the name. Windows, doors, and siding, right? You need uh, water vinyl windows. They got you. You need uh, vinyl hardy plague siding. What do you think? I think they they got got you. you. Uh, You need any type of doors. They got you. So, I know it's tax return season. If you got one, awesome. Invest in your greatest asset, your home. And I I tell you every time, just make Tommy's one of the bids and then let Tommy sell you on going with them because you're going to see the charisma. You're going to get the confidence. You're going to get the attention detail. The customer service is going to blow you away. Tommy's windows, doors, and siding. Yeah, when you go to that website that T-Bob just gave you, you are certainly going to see what we're talking about. Testimonials from past clients, a gallery of their work, and Tommy is going to blow you away from the first meeting. GoTommies.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Relief windows were more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger.
All right, and welcome back into OTB. A little Beastie Boys Thursday is what this turned into, which is never a bad thing. Uh, do we know which team that we want to go with before we get to big deal or no big deal? Have we decided? Oh, do we need I mean to talk this out a little bit more? Because we're all going to put whatever, 5 10 15 bucks on it. But I do feel like it needs to be a unanimous decision. Corn up! And no. I, I, okay. I think the way to win like the Long first Beach round. State. Are we doing? Yeah, but I'm talking yeah. about like real money that we're going to put on a team, oh, okay. a future bet to win it all. Because I feel like if we if we go like Tennessee at like plus eight hundred, like yeah, it'd be fun nah. and maybe realistic. But like I'm talking about like let's get weird. Yeah, let's go let's, St. Mary's I, yeah. plus sixty five hundred or yes, something like that. You I know, I'll, 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 I need I'll, a well. Have we looked at the odds? Uh, we've we've got them. Uh, so I just want to start the discussion here. Okay. By the end of the show, we can come up with the team. Okay. But just start it, put it out there in the ether, and maybe the chat will kind of. I chime want something in. a little crazy too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not you know not the best odds. Not I'm not picking Wagner to go win it all. But remember Wagner. last year in the Final Four, yeah, you had Miami, you had UConn, Florida Atlantic, I was say, and what's San Diego FAU State. At? Uh, Odds wise, are they good this year? They're they're they're, a, they're eight seed. They're, no, I'm saying they're, they're eight seed. I feel like team, by the way. I feel like if Tennessee is plus eight hundred, then I feel like FAU's probably no, got some pretty sexy odds. That's the one I was oh, they're going to be at way higher than like that. Like he mentioned, they were Final Four. Oh, Tennessee's they actually plus eighteen hundred. They didn't oh, wow. lose what? much from that FAU that. Final Four team. Uh, they had the same exact team. Yeah, coming back, FAU's odds. Uh, so I know I meant to say this in the break. Plus eight thousand. Ooh. But wait, so they have worse odds in St. Mary's? Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. St. Mary's has a poof. They have a pretty nice path. Where is St. Mary's? St. Mary's is a five. California. Oh, okay. No, I meant like geographically. Uh, LA, LA, LA area. Seed. No, no. Um uh, so I know you don't like uh rooting for uh things in Los Angeles, but they are gritty. They've got a top five defense in the country. Uh, they got a veteran team. Okay. They're Charlie Hustles. Okay. I'm not opposed. I mean, but is FA? Are we not more attracted to FAU, like plus, FAU. Eight, plus eight plus eight K? The problem for with 65? FAU. The problem with FAU. They play they'd one. They'd have to be. They'd have to beat UConn in the round of 32. Yeah. Man. But where St. Mary's will play that, Alabama if they beat Grand Canyon, and Alabama's streaky as hell. Uh, so you're saying that you think St. Mary's, who's the one in St. Mary's bracket? The one yeah. in that bracket, North Carolina. North Carolina, Arizona's a two. Okay. So you're saying you think that's a weaker one to set up than having the defending champs possibly uh, yeah, in round yeah. of 32? Because the two, the two in Florida Atlantic's bracket is Iowa State, Big 12 champs. They dominated Houston like they're playing really well. The East has nine conference champions in it. Okay. Okay. So, the, so, so FAU's out because they're in the bracket of death. All right, let's go St. Mary's in, dude. I'll right now, St. Mary's again, in. I'm cool like, with it. We got told, you know, 955. So, you know, let's just think about Why it. Why 955? Because the game started at 10. I thought they started at 1130 today. Well, is that Eastern? Our show ends at 955, so that's why I said. Oh, the okay, end of the show. okay. No, no, no. I was I was asking because I got to do some last second bracket stuff uh, oh. still. I want to make sure I have time. A little update on the uh, pods. Dodgers, Manny Machado, just one yard. Okay, mm. solo shot? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what is that? Two run lead? Oh, whoa. What happened? What? What? 15 to 11. Oh, I guess we missed some. Yeah, things. we missed some. <laughs> <laughs> it was 12 to 11. What's going it on, was. dude? The few Padres fans in attendance. Uh, yeah. Very excited. Um, uh, the home crowd, not so much. So, this is kind of like, um, I don't know. I meant to say this during the break. Since I've been here, we haven't done big deal or no big deal. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why we got away is. with it. We need to um, we need to get back to it, but uh, hold it's, on. Uh, it's somewhere on there. I see a button. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm being distracted, yeah, yeah, yeah. though. Uh, Matt C says New Mexico State. New Mexico Ooh. State's hot. Don't count them out. Uh, New Mexico State's not in the tournament. New Mexico is, though. Okay, well, that's what he meant. New Mexico's hot. Don't count them out. Yeah. Uh, they won the Mountain West tournament. Mountain West got six teams into the NCAA tournament. Mountain West has kind of been represented the last couple of years in a bad light because... They just didn't do well in the tournament. Got a lot of teams in, even though San Diego State went to the final a year ago. But Colorado State, right, what they did to UVA the other day, they're mm -hmm. out of the Mountain West. That kind of gives them a little a little juice as a conference heading into this tournament. So New Mexico's not a bad play. Uh, I just can't not gonna fathom. Win all, I was going to say, I just can't fathom a New Mexico team say, I'm not saying winning Mary's at all. Is, is my favorite to win this deal. But, again, they're a top five defense in this country. Actually, I think they're number two. They're only behind Houston. 
they have solid wins already on their resume. They have a very veteran team. They've been in the NCAA tournament before. So if you're looking for a five or higher to go make a run, they're as good as anyone. Um, Because you're not going to get great odds on Gonzaga, even though they're a five, because they're Gonzaga. I think they're plus yeah, 4,000. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because, yeah. Well, they, I mean, it's they're, great odds. They're, they're, they're only plus 4,000, but their brand is going to give them some juice. Uh, Mr. Big, who's down in New Orleans with his auntie and his granny, I was like, the clean the side of this Mr. Big family, um, has come out of hiding to say that uh, Dayton has the third best three-point per, uh, percentage in the entire country. How we feel about Dayton? Uh, too streaky. Dayton's way too streaky for my liking. The um, Flyers flying high? Cool mascot, but a little too streaky. What plays better in the NCAA tournament, defense or offense? Typically, the teams you see win are like senior-led teams. They play really good defense. They're really good from the free throw line. That's how come a lot of people were on Colin Gillespie and Villanova like two years ago, and they made it to the championship. They didn't win it, but like teams Kyle like was in that. New Orleans when it was like the most blue-blood, Kansas, yeah. North Carolina, Duke, Villanova, yeah. Half right. Spanish Armada says every year I buy a 32 inch screen just to smash for my bracket bust. <laughs> oh, that's actually probably <laughs> that's you know, pretty fun. Um, Leonardo da Vinci says uh, for the Bama haters, Alabama's minus 140 to not make the Sweet 16. So uh, you can bet on Bama to fail. Always I think fun. I have them in my Sweet 16. I do not. Um, I got St. Mary's beating them in the second round. No, I mean, I, I definitely choose my heart in, in these things because, you know, again, nothing matters. So, uh, yeah, no, I got Alabama being knocked out almost immediately. <laughs> they, don't, um, they don't play enough defense, though, T-Bob. You have one bad yeah, shooting that I don't night. Care. You have one bad shooting night. You're done. Everybody's like, they average 90 points a game. Yeah, they give up 82. Yeah, yeah. Nate Oates, more like Nate Chokes. Vibes. Vibes. Nate, Nate Oates loves Nate Oates, I think. Yeah, he's his biggest fan. Like, I don't know him well, so... Maybe I'm wrong there, but just from afar. Um, I like this as a prop from Leonardo da Vinci. Any buzzer beater in the first round of the NCAA tournament plus is 300. plus 280. Yeah, plus about plus 300. 300. Yeah, I just saw that one. Now, now the shot has to go in as time expires, so the other team has yes. no chance to inbound. Right. So it yeah, can't so be no like a – four. Yeah, it has to be a it's true, be true, Drew, true buzzer beater. Valpo versus Ole Miss. Which I saw that highlight this morning. Um, Bunky Perkins tweeting, happy tournament day, F Bryce Drew. And then uh, Billy Gamilla quote tweeting him and putting the uh, that that highlight up. So I mean that seems like yeah that seems like fun, right? Like I, I mean I, I think I'll bet that absolutely. Seven bucks in that your typical thing? You go seven? No, 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 no. You used I, to do that. Yeah, yeah. That was that was back when I started. Now um, I got like uh, twenty. Generally, what I'll what I'll play during college football. See, during during football, I started doing like fifty to a hundred. Yeah. Um, like single games. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Imagine that gambling's insidious and to get a rise, you have to keep upping the numbers. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> Yeah, that's like one of the, the quotes old, he had. The whole yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, he's our, like, our, I kept having to double down. And <laughs> yeah, hold on, I put the quote in the oh document. God. It's so good. Uh, so for those that missed it, Shohei Otani's interpreter and best friend uh, Ipe Musahara, uh, Mizuhara, excuse me. Um, has, has apparently accrued four and a half million dollars in gambling debt. Uh, Otani paid it off for him, and uh, the story has shifted from Otani knowing about his gambling and the debt, agreeing to pay it off, putting his name on the payments to pay it off. Um, Mitsuhara sat down with ESPN for ninety minutes on Tuesday night and detailed all of this. Uh, to then now on Wednesday, the story changed to. Otani knew nothing about anything, and I stole the money from him. Uh, sketchy. A little sketchy. Or it looks sketchy. Although, again, the same person that was texting me earlier about how it probably was all a giant cover-up for Otani, because that's a conspiracy theory, did point out that um, Rule 21 in baseball is pretty clear about making payments to illegal bookies being a lifetime ban. So he admitting runs. he paid it, would mean Otani would need to be banned, hence the story change. So, like, there's a lot of elements of play here. Again, I don't know why. I just think he looks so nice that I don't think he was doing this. I would be so upset if Shohei Otani got a lifetime ban. That would be so – I mean, bro, the MLB would never do it. That would be, that would no. be the dumbest. That would be – like, the MLB would tamper evidence, go to the yeah. – like, 
They would do whatever do illegal means they had to do to keep Shohei Otani clean. The only you organization dumb enough to do something like that would be the NCAA. Uh, true. Yep. True. <laughs> actually, actually true. Uh, you no, know, here's here's a couple of Mitsuhara quotes, though. Um, obviously, he, Otani, and this is why it's interesting, because now they're saying that he had no knowledge, right? But obviously, he wasn't happy about it and said he would help me out and make sure I never do this again. He decided to pay it off for me. I want everyone to know Shohei had zero involvement in betting. I want people to know I did not know this was illegal. I learned my lesson the hard way. I will never do sports betting again. Uh, and he would go on to say, I'm terrible at gambling. Never going to do it again. Never want no any ish. money. I mean, I dug myself a hole and it kept getting bigger. <laughs> and it meant I had to bet bigger to get out of it. It just kept on losing. It's like a snowball effect. I mean, yeah, that's how gambling works. It's like uncut gems. Yes, that is how gambling works. Guys, if you get down big, do Stop. not think that a bigger bet is your salvation. It's going to bail you out. It no, is. It's going to put no, you in the positives, no, T-Bot. No. What does that mean? It could. But even if it bails you out, you're not going to learn your lesson. What if it's a, what if it's a and lock? And you're not going to stop. What if it's a lock? Well, if it's a lock, that's different. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, if it's, it's a lock, you got to sure. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I mean, we're not talking about locks here, though. I mean, if it's a if it's if it's an otter lock, you got to roll. You you, you got to you, you got to play. That was it. his problem. He wasn't listening. He wasn't betting locks. To, yeah. Like yeah, if he would have bet the things that were for sure going to win, right. he would have been fine, but he kept doing bad bets. Which again, uh it's like I said, if I was a batter, I'd never strike out. If I was a professional gambler, I wouldn't do bad bets. It's, it's like not Alan, that hard. It looks right. like Alan on the hangover says it's not gambling if you know you're going to win. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, how do we get here? I don't know. But the story's crazy. All right. When we get back, let's close out hour number two of OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. K to Z window coverings. K-T-O-C blinds.com. Yeah, Joey LeBlanc says one has to hit eventually, right? Right? True. You would feel like. It would, my goodness. Uh, K to Z blinds, K-T-O-Z windows at .com. You can bet on K to Z. Yep. And that actually is a lock, okay? Because uh, Brandon Barton has uh, decades of experience uh, w which to back up these claims and to prove it to you that if you're trying to increase the uh, aesthetic pleasure or the functionality of your home, um, be it from a temperature, sun control, like whatever the case may be, let Brandon Barton into your home, give you that estimate, and you're going to be blown away at how much you will learn in that process and how um, plentiful your options are for taking your home to the next level. Go to KDZ Window Coverage, KDZBlinds.com. Yeah, can't stress it enough how quickly he's going to come in and learn your space, the entire team, and tell you exactly what you need. Exterior, interior, does not matter, and how many different functions it can help out with you in your home. KDZBlinds.com, KDZBlinds.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip Like cypress stumps, your fruits are planted deep inside of me. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, 
and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Paul with the ball, da bang, da bang, diggy, 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 said the boogie, said I didn't pay the boogie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll yeah, chill, yeah, chill, chill, my chill, bad. chill, my bad. chill, 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 there, Bo. White people doing ethnic accents, not acceptable. No, You're right. Chill, I chill, apologize. Chill, chill. I've been watching so much Japanese content, though, lately, dude. Between Shogun and uh, Ninja Kamui, I am, like, deep in it right does now. That, does that, like... That could be your excuse. You'd be like, well, I watch Shogun. Yeah, like, it's yeah, okay. Exactly. No, it's it just like, I'm, I'm just like a parrot. When well, I hear accents, they just like appear in my head and I want to use them. When I was watching Peaky Blinders, I was talking exactly, like, yeah, exactly. so yeah, that's it's, it's fine. You got to be careful watching Peaky okay. Blinders and then coming on a radio show in which you can't curse. No, seriously, True. though. Because True, yeah. every other word yeah. is a term of endearment on that show, yeah. which is great. Um, I love it. One of my favorite shows of all time, but here on this show? We can't be saying those words. Chat is saying that Dane Cook's own brother was his money manager and stole all of his money oh, and he had to testify man. against his brother and get him sent to jail for 15 years? Bro, hey, look, I love I love my brothers, but I don't know if Dane had a family, but if I got a family and you taking money out of my pocket... No, uh, I know, man. I mean, you know... You gotta do what you gotta do. There's a reason why money and family rarely mix. Uh, every now and then, you can pull it off, right? Um... I would say actually Caleb Williams family's done pretty right by him thus far. I mean, if, if the amount of money that he's supposed to have accrued during college is any indication, they've, they've struck some pretty positive deals. Um, I wonder what other examples of like money and family mixing well in sports would be. You but yeah, that's, money, you don't do money and friends either. Well, yeah. Remember the, uh, you all remember the Trent Richardson story? He like would get, it was one of the things where he would like, Hey, I need to go pick something up. Okay. My pen numbers blank, blank, blank. You'd give it to one friend. That friend gave it to another. That friend gave it to another. Then, like, 20 people oh, no. that were friends with Trent Richardson did this. And no. I think he said, like, he was almost bankrupt after, like, his third year in the NFL. Well, just because so well, many people even, were using well, his stuff. He didn't make four years. Yeah, I because know. Because he didn't get vested. God. Yeah. He was one game So, the short. Richardson story doesn't even have, like, at mm -mm. least, like, the Jamarcus silver lining where, like, Jamarcus invested his money in incredibly well. No, because like, he didn't get vested. He's a like real Jay estate said, magnet and, like, and they very his successful. Damn. Yeah, I, and, mm -mm. And I hate that people talk about Jamarcus not knowing the full story. That man invested incredibly well yeah, he's in property chilling, there in like Gulf Shores, Orange Beach area. Yeah, he's like loaded, right? And does incredibly well. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so he's Bison like, Daly. okay, you want to call me a bus? All right. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, dude. That's fine. I'm Bison chilling. Dele, who was in the NBA and his brother killed him, but he used to like. Wait, what? Bison just, you just say, hold on, what? what? His brother we not killed him? him? What is this? He won the championship with the Bulls in the 90, in 97. Yeah, Bison, who was? Bison Deli. I do not Bison, know this story. Bison Deli? So his brother, his brother used to like forge his signatures on stuff and like would basically scam his brother out of money. And then one day they went on a boat and none of them came back except for the brother. Oh my God. And the brother had bought like weights before they all went on the boat. So. Uh, okay, we're, yeah, we're going to have, okay. 
A lot hey, to unpack I thought, there. I thought y'all knew about this. I didn't mean to like. But now, it happened Former a while NBA player Bison Deli was killed by his brother, Miles DeBoard, as the two got into an argument aboard Deli's boat. Yeah. According to DeBoard's former girlfriend. Um, Bertrand Saldo, the boat's captain, was then killed by Deli uh, because the captain wanted to Allegedly. report Carlin's death to authorities. Um, oh, wait, hold it was, on. It was framed wait, wait, hold that on, way. Hold on, hold yeah. on. Wait, a lot of people died on this boat. Yes. A lot of people died all, on this boat. I just said all of them except for the brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, so three, three Deli people. and DeBoard were fighting. Allegedly. And Deli's girlfriend, Serena Carlin, was fatally injured. This is the story the brother told. And then the brother said that Deli killed the captain because the captain wanted to report the death and then killed himself <sighs> allegedly and then the, that Delhi and DeBoer continued to fight and then DeBoer shot and killed Delhi in self-defense um but then later he says that that Delhi killed himself and that like the story's not adding up anyways he he tried you to can't kill be the with only insulin. person you can't be the only person that comes back alive from a boat and then yeah. be like trust me this is what happened right and then he no, tried, nobody, no, nobody, that, nobody's hey, gonna believe you it's it's your word against the nobodies yeah well I mean which is the theory of why you killed everybody on the boat right, right? <laughs> and he bought two hundred dollars worth of weights beforehand and then he tried to overdose Jeez. on insulin and he was in a coma for a minute but Wait, then what he did the two hundred dollars of weights have to do with anything I guess he would have like thrown the bodies overboard oh to the oh weight. okay 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 I see what you're saying yeah. what Guys, are, are we really going to criticize a man who wants to stay in shape? <laughs> um, wow. Wow. This is the craziest story I've ever seen, Alondra. I had never seen this before. I don't Sorry. know how. Um, I didn't mean to like derail, but I thought we knew about and we were talking about stuff that happened like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's cool. Not like you it's just cool. Not like you just uh, infected the show with like one of the darkest <laughs> stories I've ever heard of in my entire life. Um, I mean, mm, it, uh, is, it is what it is. I, I've already used up all the floaters as well to kind of awkwardly transition out of things. Uh, <laughs> how do we feel about Drake at plus 20,000 to win the Natty? Probably have a better chance than like everybody Drake aboard by that himself? boat. I mean, I, I do want to bet on Drake simply no, because of, of the oh, okay, right, simply yeah. because of the name Drake. Because Drake, he roots for so many teams. That would be like four or five different yeah. teams. He time. does. He well, roots for whichever team's good. Also, now that we're talking it out, you can't really, uh, outside of the one year in which the Raptors got it done for the six god, Drake is notoriously a bit of a sporting Oh, curse. my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I. He's like, he's messed up some of my bets before, for sure. Um, everybody he bets on loses. Yeah, who who are you who are you specifically? Do you, do you Sean know Sean Strickland? Oh, when he okay. bet on Str Sean Strickland a couple months ago. It made if you me see sad. Drake, if you see now, if you see Drake bet on something, will you automatically fade him? Will you yeah. go the opposite way? Mm -hmm. yeah. Will he catch a fade if you ever see him for yeah, losing he your will. money? Yeah, yeah, because Sean Strickland got cheated out of that too. So, first game of the uh, NCAA tournament, Mississippi State, Michigan State. Let's go at eleven fifteen. I think I had Michigan State winning that one. I think I chose. I got State. I chose Mississippi State simply for like that. MSU. Nice. Yeah, MSU. Yeah. <laughs> I think I chose Mississippi State just because I want to feel better about LSU losing to them twice recently. I, I mean, went like, Mississippi oh, look, State because Michigan State got into the tournament because they wanted to keep Tom Izzo's streak alive. <laughs> and I think Mississippi State is long, athletic, and plays really well defensively, and they've got a star at guard. Look, show some respect for Izzo, dude. I'm okay with them keeping the streak alive. He's a legend of the if game. If he earns it. Martin Cleaves! Yeah, 19 the and last 15? time Mateen Cleaves was the last time the no Big Ten won a national championship. What? Hour three next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. That's crazy. Yep. Jay Johnson starting off hour three, by the way, guys. You want to come hang out? Agatim Baton Rouge, agatimbr.com. All your AC, heat, and electrical needs all under one roof there at Agatim. Service to the highest degree. They say it. The reviews support it. It's their mission statement to the core of everything they do. Learn it for yourself, okay? I can I can sit here and I can talk to you till the cows come home. But until you work with Agatemp, you're not going to fully get it. And when you do, you're going to be like, okay, now I see T-Bob. I'll never go anywhere else. You know, whole home generator, Agatemp. Agatemp Baton Rouge, agatempbr.com. When you go to that website, remember, you can schedule that appointment right there or online. Go ahead, top right corner. It's that red box up there. And chances are they're probably going to be there today. And they're going to send you a profile of exactly who's coming into your home. A little bit about that person, their experience in the field. You're going to know exactly who they are. You can trust Agatem from every single direction. AgatemBR.com.
Bayou Ford has $7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. $7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. on Thursday, March 21st. Today in Bad Rouge, expect rainy skies with a high of 66. In hour three of today's show, LSU baseball coach Jay Johnson joins us at 9 a.m. Also, a little big deal or no big deal. That and a whole lot more. If you missed hours one or two of the show, you can catch it at the on demand section at 1045ESPN.com. You can also follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 1045 ESPN channel. Hour number three of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, starts now. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the, the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back, OTB, hour three. It, it is Thursday, and I'm coughing. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, it is our distinct pleasure every Thursday to be joined by the head man of LSU baseball, Coach Jay Johnson. Coach, what's up, man? Uh, big time series in the box coming up here uh, over the weekend. How are the boys feeling today? Doing good. How are you guys this morning? Uh, doing well. Energy's high. You know, great part of the sporting calendar, right? Little NCAA basketball tournament into SEC baseball. And it's kind of um, – I want to know how you uh, parse through this and deal with this with the team, Coach, because we were looking at the SEC slate coming up this weekend, 
And I was just kind of struck by how high the stakes already feel, right? Like after one weekend, there's already multiple teams that feel like almost like back against the wall. What are you going to do? Um, how do you get your team to kind of process that and or, or deal with it? Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, it's about being consistent. You know, I got some really good advice uh, from a former coach in the league when I came out here that just you have to stay very consistent in your approach. You're going to take some body blows. You're going to have some highs throughout the course of the schedule. But every team you play is pretty much as good as you. And so the team that can just maintain consistency in their approach and their play, uh, you're going to come out of it all right. And nowadays I think it's even more important just because you know, the league has completely separated itself from everybody else in college baseball. Coach, how important was that midweek game this week against a good Louisiana Tech team, a team that has been in the postseason you know, last couple of years and won a lot of games, and to come back after dropping two of three and to have a performance like that against a good team and you score the runs, you keep their run uh, tally down there and really come out and dominate a good baseball team? Yeah, uh, I thought it was a good performance. I think this team, you know, one thing they deserve a little credit for is, you know, when we've had a loss or maybe not as good a game, we've responded with a good game and a win, and that was certainly the case on on Tuesday. Uh, it's a competitive group, and, you know, we, we treat the midweeks very seriously. If you want to put yourself in position for postseason, I always believe those are important. You know, as I've told you guys before, we dubbed the season a 56-game playoff, and Love the five-run first inning. I thought we pitched extremely well, uh, which was important coming off the weekend and a good performance. And now it's on to the Gators. Uh, and 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 real quick before we look forward to Florida and the unique challenges uh, that they represent, Coach. Looking at last weekend, uh, you know, you had some very level-headed kind of valuation. We're taking a look. Eighteen runs offensively that can win you a series. Maybe not sweet, but that can win. The the, the problem started on the mound. Um, in film review, uh, what do you feel like you identified in terms of the correctable issues uh, that you think can help lead to some improvement in that in that aspect this weekend? Yeah, I think our, our misses were too big, and when your misses are too big, the balls down the middle of the plate look like batting practice, and uh, that definitely happens a little bit. And so got to be tighter with our command, got to be tighter getting ahead in the count, and then we frankly just need guys to get us off the field. You know, some yeah. of those innings just kept kept going, and it's just that that one pitch to finish it. And sometimes that's just a a compete factor. And you know, credit Mississippi State; they did a great job. They have a good team. They have a really good team. And uh, you know, that environment was really good. Like I have mm -hmm. to tip yeah. my hat to their fans. I mean, I had never lost a game there prior to this weekend. You know, both at Arizona and here. And it, it's different when they get going, and I think some of our guys experience that for the first time. And and we need to we need to use that as value going forward because it's coming next weekend and it's coming the following road weekend that we have. Well, and it's uh and it's interesting for a couple of reasons. First, I mean, when you talk to the athletic before the season started, you actually highlighted Mississippi State as one of these undervalued teams that could surprise this year, and they look very solid. Um, also, though, not alone in the in the road struggles in the SEC, right? Like every single SEC road team ended up dropping that series. Um, what what like does does that apply any extra pressure now that you're holding serve? Now that you're back in the box and you got a very good Florida team coming to bear that's going to be looking for some uh, national championship revenge. Yeah, I mean, in both those things, I think honestly think they're both irrelevant because I really don't care what anybody else did or didn't do on the road. Mm. Like, I mean, yeah. our team is our team and we need to play as good as we possibly can play. There's certainly an element of, you know, standings and those things. And those things are all real, but we have to just focus on playing really, really good. As far as the Florida thing and last year, it's like you go through that deal. There's obviously guys on our side. Tommy White had a huge impact in the outcome of that deal there you know jack caglione Cade curland on their side but there's so many guys that were the front line of of both of our teams that are not here i yeah, mean true i don't want to say that series is irrelevant but it's it's two two completely different yeah. teams playing and, and that's a little bit the nature of college baseball you know nowadays with the transfer portal and 
you know, a lot of guys are coming in older and they're leaving quicker, you know what I mean, after yeah. like two years. So, I mean, I think it's awesome. You know, I'm, I'm super proud of the fact that, that we've won the two of the three series, or excuse me, both series we've played against them because they're a great program. And, uh, you know, this is going to be an awesome weekend. If I, I'm really excited for our fans to come out and, and get into it. And, you know, it's a traditional weekend, night-night day. It's an SEC weekend, and, and we're going to need them. You know, it's a big challenge, and we, we need them behind us this weekend. Coach, you mentioned Tommy White there, and we're seeing a fully healthy Tommy White. And obviously what he's doing at the plate, but also what he's doing at third. Yeah, I think against Mississippi State, so many fantastic plays, and not only great plays, against guys that can pick him up and put him down, getting down the line. And so, like, it was the totality of the play, not just with the glove, but with the arm as well. Is that what you saw from a healthy Tommy White, knowing what he could do defensively? Yeah, hundred percent. And he's worked really hard, not just this year, but last year. I mean, it's the main reason we got him. It's like, hey, man, I'm gonna ride or die with you at this at this spot, and yeah. we're gonna continue to develop you. And uh, he is delivered, you know, in in the best way possible. He's having an excellent defensive season. He's really picked it up offensively, and it just shows you how good that he is. It's like, I mean, for a while he was hitting three thirty. It's like, oh well. He's not going yet. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I, I kind of felt like I was sticking up for him, and I'm like, what is wrong with you people? And then you see him go, you know, then you, then you see him go homer four games in a row, and yeah. it's like, okay, I got I got you now. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, Coach, uh, we there's, there's professional baseball on this morning. Shohei Otani, we've been talking a lot of Otani, and, uh, and Jack Caglione, obviously Florida brings to bear uh, one of the – most exciting two-way players in in all of college baseball. Um, what's your view like when you're game plan? Are you do you game plan like that's two different players? Do you somehow yeah. connect the two? Like how do you deal with that? Yeah, well, I mean, offensively, he's going really good right now. I mean, I was, I watched the series last night with Texas A and M and. Or two midweeks surrounding it, he's he's really swinging the bat right now, like as good as anybody in the country. Yeah. Uh, pitching wise, uh, we'll get their rotation uh, late this morning, you know, per SEC rule, mm -hmm. and um, you know we'll find out what day he's pitching. And uh, he threw Sunday last week, so I think he'll either be Saturday or Sunday. They tightened up his arm action a little bit; he's been a little bit more consistent. You know, we're gonna have to do what we do against good pitchers and battle him and and try to get into that bullpen, you know, because he's he's a lot to deal with. I, I'll i never forget that last year in that championship game. Like, in the first inning, he looked like Ivan Drago, like, knocking out Rocky. <laughs> and then and then we put six runs on the board. So we're going yeah. to gonna have to find him. Coach, we talked about this, I think it was last week, maybe two weeks ago, having the experience on Friday nights in Holman that can go out there and know the SEC. And so – it's a little bit of a unique game for him against Mississippi State with all the singles that they had. So, like, the contact wasn't, you know, maybe the stat line didn't match up with each other. But how important is it to know that you've got a guy that is pitched in this league so he understands, look, you might not have your best stuff on this Friday, but you've got to bring it the next Friday knowing the opponent's going to be one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, he'll he'll be better. And, you know, I just – the person – I mean, this guy is – he's got the it part of it. Like, yeah. You know, I, I caught him on Saturday or Sunday, and we were just chatting for a minute. And it's like it boiled down to one thing, like, I'll be better. I think I don't worry about this guy coming out and going, hey, I don't have this pitch. And I mean, if you come out and just say, hey, I don't have it or this pitch, you're just making an excuse of why you're going to go out there and fail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or True. if you're worried about the pitch call, pitch calling. And that, that's not Luke at all. And that's why he's positioned right where he's at. And uh, I expect him to give us consistent performances, you know, over the rest of the, the season here. and. Uh, it sure feels better when you know you got a guy that's going to go out there and throw strikes and compete. Yeah. Uh, look, Coach, I, ca I can't wait, man. It's going to be so much fun. LSU, Florida, two of the premier programs in the entire country doing battle in the box all weekend long. And if you're listening to this, uh, LSU fans, crowd, get yeah. out to the box, pack it out, make it loud, make it intimidating, make it hard on these Florida Gators. Uh, Coach, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, yes, sir. Coach, Coach Jay Johnson, uh, absolute legend. I uh, can't thank him enough for coming on every single week. Sounds like he's in good spirits, team in good spirits, head on the right way. 
again, your classic kind of never get too high, never get too low, remain even keel. Yep. Um, the perfect man that you want leading your program through an SEC baseball season. Yeah, let's all be Gator haters uh, this weekend. Yes. And definitely pack out the box because you heard Jay Johnson say Mississippi State's home crowd, you know, it, it was really at its peak. And those things can affect a baseball game. It's funny to think that he had never, um, you know, he kind of felt like he had never really seen the dude at full dude because he was just so used to shutting it down. Yeah. That's I mean, crazy to think that you could go there for multiple series and then uh, finally uh, to kind of taste what it was actually about. I'd lo- I kind of loved what he said, though, about, like, other teams. You know what I'm saying? Like, all yeah. the other road yeah, yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, oh, like, I, I know. Really I, feel, I feel like I, feel I mean, like it's a good question that you love asked. the question, but, you know, I want to, you know, sometimes you got to set a coach up to uh, get, get those feelings. No, but, yeah, yeah, because said, it's an analytic that we've talked about. He said, screw that, dude. Yeah. We don't care. Yeah. Don't care about last year's daddy. Don't care about what other teams did. He has so much Coach Saban in his personality. Yeah, I know. As except far as just, that, yeah. except he's just way more outgoing and nicer human. Yeah. Right, to the general public. But I'm talking about, like, game planning and the way that he thinks and putting a roster together and moving forward. Like, we've all heard the stories of Coach Saban. The day you get back from celebrating a national championship, tell you that's over. Don't talk about that anymore. Yep. Like that had that feel of, yeah, that was nice. Glad we did it. But that doesn't matter. Both these teams are all new. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm nervous. I mean, how are we feeling? It, I, I feel a lot of nerves because, I, you know, I mentioned teams feeling like they're back against the wall. LSU's in that category. No doubt. Um, going against a, a, a good Florida team who's already won a series and, and you kind of unexpectedly starting at one and two. I'm a little nervous, but I think we'll be all right. Yeah. No, no, I ain't scared. Yeah. I ain't scared. It's good nerves. Yeah, it's good nerves. It's, it's good nerves. Florida's coming to the box. It, the vibe is going to be insane out yeah. there. I hope I can make it out to one That's of the what games I'm saying. this I weekend, saw y'all. But... I saw how y'all packed it out for the bananas, bro. Yeah. If you can do it for the bananas, you can do it for the Tigers. Okay? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not nervous at all. I think LSU bounces back in a big way. I mean, you went to Mississippi State on the road. Mm-hmm. Obviously not the performance you wanted. Even the game you won, you won that one. You let it get way like, too sketchy. It was, it was yes. nine to you one. You went nine to eight. Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. comes down to the last out. That's not what Jay wanted. I think he's going to get them right this weekend. For sure. Um, it's like he said. Like we don't. Every single time we've had like a a bad. I don't want to say like a bad game. Yeah. yeah we come back, back and we. So I. Yeah. It was a hallmark of last year's okay. team as well. It is. Yeah, a hundred percent. So something in the I mean, Jay they, Johnson process instills that. Yeah. Very excited. I hope I can get out to one of the games this weekend. I'm trying to get to Friday because I have uh, the old football camp in the Port City on Saturday. I got to go up to. Uh, so if I'm you're actually, listening to Treeport, dude. You want so to I'm, at, I'm actually going to 318 as well Saturday. Wedding in Monroe? Wedding, yeah. Shout out my guy AD. Getting married. You know, tie the knot. You're going to rush back home Sunday for a uh, for the Pink Panda season opener, guys. Oh, Feeling good about it. Nice. Feeling good about it. What day is that? A Sunday. Sunday. Hopefully, uh, get that dub. That hopefully, Pandas dub. get that dub, dude. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I feel like we've seen a lot of improvement, but I'm guessing other teams have improved as well over is the offseason. T ball no. or what is uh, this? Or is soccer. soccer. Okay. This is footy. Little football. No, T ball practice tonight. Why the hell? We already have so many freaking things when only one kid is really playing sports. I don't know. Oh, bless your heart. I know. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. No, that's why I fear it, right? Yeah. Because this is one kid. I know. And saying. already there's gymnastics, soccer. T ball, dance, and it's like I got two more that are gonna to want to do all this stuff too. The hell out of here. I'm never doing two spring sports again. I think it's really dumb. No, 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 no. Um you yeah. gotta fight through the fire because it's fun. Don't get me if wrong. If they want to do it, it's fun. Which is half the battle, they'll come out better on the other side. It's very fun. Um Jeff G, uh doesn't T Bell remind you of the guy uh in the show The Hangover, other than being about two inches taller. Uh yeah, look, I, I would agree. I've gal Panakis vibes. Um, I would also say though, I'm, I'm more than two inches taller than Zach Galifianakis. That I is, would say you're six. I would say you're two feet taller than Zach that Galifianakis. Is the main thing that I get when I see people in real life now that it's no longer what He's really five, happened seven. in 2011, right? It used to be what really happened in 2011. Then LSU won the Natty in 19, and that disappeared. Thank God. Now it's Texas Day, Brazil. Uh, no, no, that's been, no, no, yeah. no. What it is is everybody's like, oh, you're taller than I thought you were. Like, I think, I don't know. Everybody thinks I'm like a like a little stocky guy or something. 
Maybe it's because like everybody else in the line was like six six, but like I don't know. Half these people don't remember you playing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But yeah, he's five seven. Um, a champ says, "Do you have six five? He tells the plan he's six three. No, no, I'm six three. It's just that a lot of y'all want to juice up your own height a little more than it actually is. On my exactly. tall leg, I'm six three and a half. Um, on my short leg, I'm six two and a half. So I, I, I kind of split the gap there. Yeah. I got 5'11 at the combine, which is supposed to be the toughest measurement there is. And I'm, I'm, I think I'm 5'10. There you go. I don't know there if it's go. from ISOs and my neck just shrinking. But I'm d- Dude, I am going to be bummed when I start to shrink, you know, because uh, that happens. Don't and be bummed. Low man wins. Yeah. 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 I guess so. I guess so. Uh, you should see the picture T-Bob posted on X. He looked like an angry Justin Bieber with a beard. <laughs> You're talking about <laughs> talking to the manager. Yeah. Um, mm. If he was 6'5", he'd make his hands look even smaller. Okay, relax, Joey. Thank you. Uh, Casey, of course, T-Bob likes CL leaders. I do. Okay, I do. Sue me. Why Why? why, why? do you like them? Yeah, you're the only person because, I've ever because heard Because they're unique, that. and I think it's cool when the crowd does synchronized chants. Okay, but T-Bob, Woo! like, you got to understand, do no, you know so why bad, it's T-Bob. unique? Woo! Because it's weird, and nobody else wants to do it. That's what makes it unique. If it was a cool <laughs> tradition, someone else would steal it or have their own version of it. It's not, so nobody, they stay away from it. I, um... I don't know. I, 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 I've always liked it. I, I do the, you don't think, I mean, look, the yell practice stuff is so cringe that it actually is good as well. Like the, the, the yell practice videos that were going viral, uh, over the last two years are so fantastic. Um, I don't know. I, again, I, I, I do think, I just remember going to an A&M game in junior high before they were ever on the SEC's radar and being blown away by, um, 90,000 people all doing the same thing. It was it was pretty wild. Cheers, the swaying back and forth. I thought it was all pretty cool. Honestly, anytime they get a big-time recruit, I'm shocked because I'm like, they went to an on-campus visit. Like, there's no way they enjoyed that. Um, Fon Sandrelli, 6'5", in size 9 shoes. Okay, I, or 13s. Thank you very much. Okay, relax. Pump the brakes, guys. Pump the brakes. You want to check? No. You want to check? I don't really grab Yeah, it. exactly. What does that say right there, bro? It's so faded. It says women's 15. <laughs> it's so faded. Why is that tongue so faded? I think these are a 12. Um, well, I, anywhere 12 to 13, you know. What are you going to? All so right. 12. When we get back, I want to talk some pals. Maybe a little big deal. No big deal. It's not size nine and a half. Get the hell out of here, guys. Uh, more OTB coming up next. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. I'm an idiot. We got munchies next. I'm so sorry. Oh, I can't. oh I'm, I'm hungry. So sorry. I don't know. This is a good idea. I think we have munchies. Yeah, we have munchies. Ah, man. I'm sorry, Chef. Um, Trash Rangers. Trash Rangers. Go to TrashSignUp.com. The local waste management option. Okay. Forget about the national guys that leave the trash here, but take the profits out of state. Go with the local guys that funnel those profits back into the community through churches, through sports teams, through the community. Okay. But it's not just that, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you to switch if the actual service and experience the product, they get, if it wasn't better, but it is, it's more efficient. It's more reliable. They text you the night before they come. So you never get out and put out the cans again. You go to trash signup.com. If you're in a center or living in parish and in three minutes, you select your number of cans, your pickup dates, see the prices, trashrangers.com. Yeah, when you go to that website, you are going to see everything T-Bob talked about, including the reviews and ratings, 4.7 out of 5, 3,000 ratings right now. You're going to get great, reliable service. Weekly text reminders, trashrangersllc.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. When it comes to ending cancer... We push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. 
The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What up, y'all? Welcome back. Go GB. It's time for some munchies. Chef Michael Johnson. Chef, what up, dog? How are you guys? Uh, doing well. Great to speak with you another week. Uh, yep. Bilbo Baggins says, hashtag munchies. I made some pretty great P -p potatoes au gratin last night, but I feel like they could use some pizzazz. Any suggestions on what to throw in next time? So you know what I really love to do with potato au gratin. I like to shave carrots or or cut thin, you know, similarly thickness carrot, sweet potatoes, and different types of um, potatoes and carrots in there, and and it kind of I don't know the carrots add kind of a sweetness to it, you know, and you have a color change in there as well. Obviously, that I think it just makes the dish. A lot more interesting, um, you know. The, the cream sauce—I don't know. Like you, you can you can mess around with the types of cheese that you put in there. Like you know, we talk about smoked gouda all the time, or something a little charismatic, maybe some blue cheese or something in there. That you got to be careful of, of the level of fat of the cheese that you put into your sauce because it uh, it can leach grease out, and then you got a, a hot mess. So, hashtag munchies. What is Chef's favorite brand of French bread? Uh, you know. I don't know, man. I, I you know, I, I, we, we buy Gambinos here, and, and because it's, it's got the name and, and it's got the texture that I like. But I mean, there's, there's other places out there that do it well, but we use Gambinos. Uh, hashtag Munchies. If Chef had to prepare a meal for the Texas A&M Yell Leaders, what would it be? A <laughs> uh, steaming heap of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't have, uh, just no fecal matter? Between. Just a steaming <laughs> heap of fecal matter? Man, I, I, I am not a huge fan of, uh, of anything A&M. And, and it, you know, uh, forgive me, uh, my, my grandmother told me if I didn't have anything nice to say, just, just to bite my tongue. So. <laughs> Hashtag munchies. Tell us why anchovies are underrated and some more ways to use them. Huh. Um, you know, like I like white anchovies. There's, there's other types of anchovies as well. Um, typical anchovies, you know, like they, they, they've – typically going to sauces and stuff and do well with that with the salt content these days you got to watch it because it, it's a fish you know and you have lots of seafood allergies and 
Um, mm. You know, pe- people are taking anchovies out uh, of stuff because of that seafood allergy. But um, I, I really like white anchovies. They're not as salty. You can you can put those on crackers and eat them straight. You know, you like you can put them in a salad straight. Uh, you can put them on a, a charcuterie board or whatever. What's up, dude? How are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I never. Um, I don't think I've ever had an anchovy in my life, dude. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I want to try some anchovies on pizza. Do pizza places still do that? Yeah. They do. Yeah, you, you can still get them on there. Yeah. Okay. Um, hashtag munchies. Uh, what's chef's secrets to perfectly fried shrimp? Uh, I, I like to, I, I like to fry first. I use corn flour. Um, and, and I also like to fl- fry close to 400, like nice. And, it, it, it gets that flour nice and crispy. Um, sometimes also I'll put a little bit of cornstarch in there and it helps, helps keep them crisp for longer. Um, it's, instead of just flour. Uh, also, my wife uh, just texted me. She actually listened to the show. What up, babe? Uh, she says, I'm an idiot that Caesar dressing has anchovies in it. So Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have an anchovy. But I've never, like, I've never, like, seen the anchovy and, and then, like, <laughs> b- bitten into it, right? It's always yeah. been blended up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want a yeah, pizza with just yeah. fish looking at me. Uh, I'm also an idiot because I didn't know that either, Caitlin, so I apologize. Yeah. You, you puree it into it. Yeah, it, kinda, it gives it its salt, kind of gives it some charisma. A lot of places actually have taken the anchovy out because of the seafood allergy, yeah. even in Caesar dressing. You know, it's kind of like the uh, the nut free uh, um, pesto nowadays. You know, because of because of nut allergies. So um, there's a lot of places out there making it without. But she is absolutely correct. Traditional Caesar dressing does have does, absolutely does. Yeah, I mean, speaking of my wife, no nut allergy can confirm. Hashtag munchies if chef <laughs> <laughs> cooking boring, boneless, skinless chicken breasts for dinner. Any suggestions to amp up for my meal? They're cooking <laughs> boneless, endless chicken breast. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I, I panicked on the transition there. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, they're cooking boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And um, they want to, you know, how, how can they how can they make it exciting a little bit? Um, one is you got to sear that off. You know, I don't, I don't care if you're trying to be trying to be healthy or not, but you, you got to sear it off and put some color on it, right? Like a lot of people just will, will – steam chicken and, and and or or even crowd the pan when they're putting chicken in and it, it steams more than it does brown and the brown is that browning called the the Maillard reaction is is um when you know the meat or the or the protein you know picks up picks up that that brown color off the pan and it's not burning it there's a there's a transformation there and that that right there is absolute you have to have that in order to make you know the chicken taste better if you ask me um, sauces are always a, an option. Um, brines are on option, so you can put, you know, like flavors into the brines while you're brining the chicken that are a little bit more subtle and not so overwhelming than a, as a sauce is. It, especially with the chicken breast because it's white meat, that brine will soak in overnight and will help retain moisture when you're cooking it, and you'll have the most tender uh, piece of chicken breast that you've ever had. So I, I think those are three things that you start with and, and really – improve the quality and the charisma of the chicken breast and then you know like pairing the pairing it with the right thing you know like um things that are coming fresh out the garden is is what's coming to my mind you know like mushrooms are popping this time of year which you know are are fantastic i like mushrooms on just about anything especially chicken um greens you know or or a a fresh a a fresh like sauteed spinach on top of chicken is always good hashtag munchies hypothetically if you were to be the chef for the Livingston Parish Nudist Colony Grand Opening Party, <laughs> what would you cook? <laughs> well, that'd be exciting. Um, <laughs> would it? I mean, yeah. it'd be interesting <laughs> if nothing else. You'd know if somebody yeah. was excited, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. My mind's going to crawfish and doing like three different ways, you know. Um, but in, 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 I mean, these days crawfish are like gold, so you know that that that, that would be quite a treat. <laughs> um, I don't know. I. I, I for some reason, wild boar comes to mind as well. You know, like uh, I think, I think you know, like taking a taking a wild boar and turning it into something fantastic, like a pulled pork or something like that. that um, I, I mean, I kind of love the crawfish answer, Chef, because you can't get dirty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, there's no shirt to stain or anything. You're good to go, dude. You're golden. <laughs> yeah. uh, just hop in a bath or hop in a lake or something afterwards. <laughs> um, hashtag munchies. 
Do you wash your rice? I do. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, it, it's just necessary. I like to get that extra starch out of there. It, it, it benefits. Um, you know, if I'm... I can't really think of a, a dish off the top of my mind where I'm uh, where I would want that starchy water in there like you do pasta. Some some people will utilize that, but I, I, nothing's coming to mind off the top of my head. You know, I, I I I find benefit in rinsing the rice for sure, especially if it's coming straight from the farm. Um, and then the last one here, Chef hashtag Munchies. Um, uh, where was it? It's about uh, okay. How do you make an Asian peanut sauce for like a salad or a spring roll? Yeah, so um, start with sesame oil, and, and you're you're using the sesame oil and and, a, and the peanuts, uh, and I, I cheat with a little peanut butter in there, a little crunchy peanut butter, um, to help kind of bind it together. Um, also, like to use some uh, like sambal oil or chili oil in there mm-hmm. to kind of cut through the uh, sesame oil. Sesame oil tends to be a little bit strong. Um, you can heat your peanuts so that they're warm when you puree them, and it tends to um, you know, smooth out a little bit better than cold peanuts, honestly, if, if uh, or, or heat your oil, even if you um, are using a, like a burr mixer or a, a Roboku or whatever. But uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. You, you know, you put your peanut butter in and your peanuts puree that and drizzle your uh, uh, oil in on top slowly so that it, it kind of builds the body and you're looking for it to be able to turn over itself. Like it, at first it's just going to, make a, a mass of a ball that's going to push around in your roboku or food processor but once that stops and it starts turning over itself and kind of spiraling in oh. um you know that's 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 the texture that you're looking for there and you can put other stuff in there you know like sometimes i'll i'll put some cilantro in there to kind of brighten it up or or maybe some lemon zest in there to uh you know give it a little bit of contrast that's like always one of the more interesting things about cooking and i, I feel like you see it a lot in baking but it's when like it's not just raw ingredients being added together, but how you add them, right? Like yeah, slowly right, yeah. over time and that yeah. whatever science behind that makes it actually work fascinating. Uh, Absolutely. Simply fascinating. Yeah. Um, Chef Michael Johnson, our favorite person probably in the entire world, been doing this for years. Happy Annie again from last week. Happy BB yeah. Chef. You're the absolute best man. Uh, you, have a, you have a great weekend, my friend. Appreciate y'all. Y'all take care. Chef Michael Johnson, executive chef for LSU Athletics, a legend of the game, and answers all of our culinary queries every single week. Um, what are you talking about squirrel uh, in the chat for, Taylor? That's what we're cooking at the LP Nudist Colony. It's oh, a delicacy yeah, yeah, for us out okay, there. Okay, hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I've actually never had squirrel. I've heard it's maybe okay, not the best. I've heard I've heard, I've heard, heard mixed results. Um, I heard Shannon Sharp talking about it. My old man used to talk about it, too. Have you ever had squirrel? Yep. How is it? Okay. It's okay. Not bad. Um, I tried. I think I it was scared. in a stew, if I'm not mistaken. It feels like, you know, that feels like if you're trying to, like, you know, do a meat that maybe isn't of the highest quality, you can't go wrong with a stew. Yeah. A little stew. Um, Champ says squirrel's actually the best you can eat, honestly. There you go. Uh, Gulf South says Cuban bread over French bread. I mean, great Cuban bread is fire, actually. It's tough, though, because... French bread can be, there's so many different styles and how people like it. I don't know. Somebody brought over a fresh baked loaf yesterday to my home and they like made Jimmy John's bread somehow. And it was incredible. Jimmy John's does slap. I mean, it was incredible. I think we took down the whole uh, loaf yesterday. Um, All right. When we get back, more OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans.
Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. The light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's up? Welcome back, OTB. So, I feel like Jersey Mike's has gone through a bit of a, like, I don't know, maybe not a renaissance, but they, they've just been hot lately, right? Like, I feel like everybody's been talking them up. They have all these giant commercial campaigns. They have cold subs as well. It's I not used just to hot. go, um, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, that's an awful joke, but I see what you yeah, mean. Um, I don't love Jersey Mike's. So, that's what I was going to say, right? Yeah. I, and I used to go there after church for a while, like, we'd probably spent a couple of years there when I was growing up where we used to go all, every, every week, and, like, yeah, you know, I, I like I like the sauce, uh, kind of oil vinegar, whatever the sauce is they put that, that like oil they put on there. Um, but whatever. The other day, I want a sandwich. Randomly hadn't been there in years. I was like, I'll go pop in. Right? I see Danny DeVito yelling at me about it all the time. I love Danny. And uh, meh. I know I had it once, and I never went back to get it again because I just don't really care for it. Is I. I like Jimmy John's. I love Firehouse. I wish there was a Firehouse. See, closer. everybody, a lot of people where I grew up too were all obsessed with Firehouse, and I'm kind of on the same boat with that. I'm kind of like, so love you know what's funny? Right? Like all of us have di like Jake. What's your favorite sandwich chain restaurant? Jimmy like John's. That? Okay, mine is Jersey Mike's. 
like you, my sister and brother-in-law love Firehouse. I hate Firehouse. It's so weird that every single person knows. What's like yours, Steve? Uh, Sam, I, like out of like the big chains. Yeah, the big chains. Because yeah, like yeah, local, yeah. I go Inga's. Yeah, yeah, there's a million. Yeah, there's a ton of places I go locally over. But um, yeah, uh, 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 Jim John. If there's a yeah. Schlotzky's here, I'd I'd go Schlotzky's. I do love I do love Schlotzky's as well. Schlotzky's. I know Jay Bob hates it, but oh, you don't like I, Schlotzky's? Whoa, 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 whoa! I don't think I've ever eaten at Schlotzky's. Good. I don't have I don't have a Schlotsky's Wait. take. I don't have a Schlotsky's take. I I've love never eaten it. I've never eaten we, had, we had this conversation after the show like two weeks ago. No, no, no. I couldn't have been here I, for that. I, I do kind of remember that. You remember that? Guys, I've never yeah. eaten it. I don't remember that. I have never offered up an no, opinion it, it, it on went, Schlotsky's. It went two weeks ago. This was like in like the fall. Oh. She wasn't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I have never offered up an opinion on Schlotsky's Deli. I have no opinion on Schlotsky's. It must I have been it Schlotzky's. must have been somebody that walked in here like Hunt or Brain or so Musso or somebody Schlotzky's else. Deli? Is that the guy who killed all the people on the boat? Yeah, same guy. They didn't have the same last right? name. Yeah, Bryson Deli, Schlotsky's yeah, Deli. Yeah, they didn't have the that same last name. That was a good joke. Uh, unlike it what y'all been a good have joke. been throwing out here. Uh, hey, big bets. What are we doing for, for a big bet? Big time bets. Yeah, that was actually That was a good joke. Oh, Big Time Bets was actually the best joke of the day. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I thought you were trying to circle back to the... Uh, oh, yeah, we could do that, too. But, yeah, no, I was saying... I have a Marzawani. Y'all remember the Quiznos commercial? Go to commercial. Oh, yes. Quiznos. Does that still exist? That on, uh, there's one in Texas. There is one. I like to hear, like, there's one. There's <laughs> no, one it, it, singular it's, it's, Quiznos. So it's, it's, it's right near Southeastern, which is why I know about it. We used to have one on campus. They took it away. Um, you pass up the downtown Hammond exit. There's one called the Airport Road exit. It's right there. Right look at uh, look at uh, look up the Quiznos commercial, the little rat. All right, so here we, we go. It all on right, snaps. It's one of the best commercials of all time. All right, so we're we're going to exclude the teams that have less than a thousand plus a thousand odds. Okay, okay, because that's not fun. No, no. Uh, North Carolina plus eighteen hundred. Tennessee plus eighteen hundred. No, we need bigger. bigger Auburn bigger plus. Odds. Okay, like how high do you want to go? Like three thousand minimum. Ooh. Okay, three thousand minimum. Duke plus three thousand. Kentucky plus three thousand. Baylor thirty five hundred. Illinois thirty five hundred. Alabama four thousand, Gonzaga forty five hundred, followed by Kansas at five thousand, BYU at six thousand, Wisconsin at six thousand, Florida at sixty five hundred, Michigan State at sixty five hundred, St. Mary's at sixty five hundred. Why am I liking St. Mary's? I, I think mean, it's because we talked about it so much, but I'm I'm kind of right there. What so is Kansas plus five thousand. Okay, no, Kansas is injured and they might lose in the first round. Okay. Um, Let's which, just go with St. Mary's. In we've been so circling Saint around Mary's, St. Mary's and flirting a with them. Twenty-five dollar bet would win you one thousand six hundred twenty-five. I mean, that's <laughs> definitely not gonna like. That's definitely not just lighting twenty-five dollars on fire. It's absolutely no. gonna hit. Yeah, that's why it's payout so big. Right. Um. Yeah. It's I'm a down. lock. I'm down. Can Saint anybody Mary's. in here tell me St. Mary's mascot? Um. Mm. The crosses. The don't hate the it. Trinity. They, they I think I, I think I actually know what. Is it the gales? It is the gales. Like like wind gales. Right? I would think so. Because uh, Bobby Carpenter, uh, he went to Lancaster, the Golden Gales, and their Ooh. mascot is a, like a tornado. Oh, yeah. I don't know. But they're religious school. So, like, is there a gale in the religious world that we're yeah, missing? I don't know. Probably so. And pr somebody's probably like, are these idiots serious right yeah. now? Um, do you have the Quiznos commercial? Uh, <laughs> I think so. Can it you doesn't play look with, like a commercial, but yeah. Mm. Okay, it's let's see rack commercial. They're playing yeah, instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, can we get this with sound, please? Yep. Can you give me two seconds. All right, ready? Wow. Okay. We love these songs. Because they are good to us. The quiz no subs. They are tasty, they are crunchy, they are warm because they toast them. Got a bar. Quiznos new Santa Fe trio subs with smoky chipotle sauce. There you Fried go. You see, people spend millions Someone of dollars creating ad campaigns. Wait, wait, wait. That has to be a parody, right? That no, was no, 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 no. That was a commercial. national commercial campaign for Quiznos. Someone awful. pitched that, and they were like, yeah, we go love with the it. Sauce. Imagine the other pitches <laughs> that they, they turned down to to except that one. I mean, yeah, how much do you think DeVito's making? And then that thing cost $10 to make. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, and, it, and, it, and it stood the test of time. Is one of them a pirate? I don't know. Yeah, it's a pirate and then a top ad for the other one. One's a magician, the other's a pirate. Uh, when we get back. Uh, real quick, the nickname of St. Mary's sports teams is the Gales, which have been given to the school's football team in 1926 by Pat Franey.
a writer for the San Francisco Bulletin. The school's previous nickname was the Saints, although the baseball team still kept the nickname the Phoenix up until the 1940s. That's too much. And yeah, in the simplest anymore. terms, a Gale is an Irish person. <laughs> Legend has it that in the 1920s, that writer gave them the name Gales because there were so many Irish guys on the squad. Hmm. I'm Irish. I like it. Let's ride. Uh-huh. Okay. Were those okay. rats the high rats in okay. New Orleans? I'm down. Yes. Yeah, they've been eating all the marijuana. They're all high. Uh, there's rat droppings on the desks. All right. Um, oh, Gales and Gaelic people, says Mac Lindsay. There you go. Good call. All right, cool. Let's ride then. Um, when we get back more to be closing on the show, ask the bench. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. All-star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. We like the cars! Because <laughs> they are good to us. Go to All-Star Toyota today. And, uh, I mean, we should just have a magic guinea pig and a pirate guinea pig up here doing these live reads. Probably go way better. Uh, but, look, you go to All-Star today, and you're going to find your next vehicle, be it new, used, uh, where maybe you want to rent. Uh, again, the service center, guys, it's for everyone. All makes and models welcome. All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge, go in today. Tell them OTB sent you. Get $100 toward the deductible. They got the shuttle service right there inside the rental car. It's all there for you. All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge. Go to the website today to reserve that rental. Spring break coming up here this week, next week, whenever that is. And you probably already have a trip planned. Well, don't panic. You still have time to get your reserved rental there. Something bigger, something better on gas mileage, like whatever it is. You just want to save miles on your vehicle. You can get it done. Call Miss Lisa Sessions today in the rental department. All-star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. It was a human day. Barefoot children play Looking for the summer shade Time to slip Kept Secret in Town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales.
All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back. Ask the Bench. Brody Rock, Cole, Curtis Light, Busy Art, Tilter, Blue Moon Lights, Sky Citrus Sweet. Speaking of French bread, what's your favorite kind of po' boy? Uh, fried shrimp. But I also love uh, the surf and turf, which is fried shrimp and roast beef from uh, Parkway. And I also love roast beef. And I like fried oyster po' boys. And I like hot sausage po' boys. But fried shrimp. I love po' boys. I love po' boys. I like a, a good boiled shrimp po' boy. Mm. I don't oh. think I've had that. Interesting. Yeah. I've never heard that place answer. Denim. We got a place out in Denham that has one, yeah. and it's good. Because I'm always trying to eat a little bit healthier, and I actually like boiled shrimp better than fried shrimp. Um, like a chain restaurant that actually has like a decent one that is surprising is Nukes. Uh, hmm. I like a good Nukes Q. That's a good sandwich. Um, I hate your fried shrimp, boiled shrimp take, but, you know, to each their own. The I like why? Club. Uh, just because I think fried shrimp is like one of the tastiest things in the entire world. I don't, like, I don't like fried food like most people, though. Oof. The roast beef po' boy at Rocco's is really good. It's a good one. I like a club. Shout like out they Rocco. got They got that, too. I like the turkey ham roast beef anywhere. Don't care where from. Yeah, love he taught Rocco. me a lot about modern life. Yeah, I love Rocco. Uh, ask I appreciate the bench. that. I don't know, I don't if, know they if they did, they but I did. Uh, uh, yeah, the cartoon. Oh, okay. Ooh. Look at you. See you, girl. Sometimes 16-year-olds can find their way. Uh, ask the bench. Uh, what does the price have to come down to for you to get crawfish? The place by my house went down to seven ninety nine, and they have really good crawfish. It's a uh, country corner. So I need five pounds, and I kind of feel like thirty five is still a little crazy, like thirty five bucks. But that is maybe going to be my starting point. So yeah, like six ninety nine. Six six would fifty be my, would be yeah. my starting point. Yeah. I got a lot of people to feed. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that price is going to be for me. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's five pounds just for me and me alone. Right. Um, yeah, so I've got five kiddos, four that would eat crawfish, and a wife that really enjoys it as well. So yeah. it's going to be expensive. Uh, we need some more Ask the Bench questions, guys. Uh, is St. Mary's our play? Let's put it in. Yeah. St. Mary's, Mary's is the play. Let's do it. So now we all, we're all in on St. That's who we're rooting for? Yes. Okay. Sure. Go, Gail. Are we going to uh, do like an OTB watch party? I like that they have Grand Canyon, who's like a really good team. <laughs> right. I don't yeah. think, I was thinking like, it was so bad of a show. I was wondering maybe, maybe, maybe dinner tonight, potentially. I had a t-ball practice, but it might get canceled. I don't know. We can see. Okay. We can see. Um, hashtag, ask the bench. Do you leave garlic whole when put in a boil? I actually have never boiled my own crawfish, so I can't answer. Yeah, but I, I love, uh, love garlic. full whole cloves of garlic in the boil that I can then just eat alone, mm -hmm. eat with tails. Yeah, garlic in the boil is one of the best things in the world. I agree. Just love garlic. Garlic in general. Yeah. Ask Jake, what is the most consumed item in the house? Uh, Dr. Pepper for my oh, boys and Dr. Uh, cereal they get and me. milk. Cereal, milk, Dr. Pepper. Yeah, milk just. Yeah, the, my boys. They understand have, me with the DP. Yeah, they love how oh, they love it. My boys have my love for cereal. All but Huddy. Huddy doesn't really mess with it like that. And Taylor, was telling, Taylor was telling me the other day how he much, how much he loves DP yeah. as well. Yeah, I do. Dr. He Pepper, I, have it. It. Yeah. I keep it stocked no, in my No, no, it wasn't yeah. that DP. It was something, yeah, I mean, else. something DP about y'all doing it in Livingston yeah, and the know. nudist colony yeah, there. Guys, it hasn't opened yet. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It was a soft opening. Yeah. Which is not a good. Yeah, it's not, not good situation. for the it's See, I'm not showing up on a soft <laughs> opening <laughs> no, anyways. No, 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 no. I need a good hard opening. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, ask the bench. McNeese winning tonight? Yes. Uh, they got a shot. They got a real shot. And I like whoever no wins that game. Whoever wins that game, I think, has a Elite shot eight. against Kansas if they get past Stanford. Um, ask the bench. Uh, is there yeah. any vegetable you would not put in your crawfish bowl? Uh, we gotta go, actually. Off the bench with What's Hester up? and T-Bob. Shout out to the MMR group. The nation's largest industrial and electrical instrumentation company. And they're headquartered right here in Baton Rouge, y'all, okay? They got offices all over the globe. And if you're looking to ignite your career and you want to work in an environment with outstanding benefits, a dynamic culture, Go on adventures around the world. Well, then the MMR group is for you. 
And I don't care if you're a student seeking internship pathways, if you're a new professional guys, or if you're a seasoned pro, explore what MMR can offer you by going to MMRGRP.com. Apply now. We are so pumped to be partnered with MMR. Check out what they can do for you. MMRGRP.com. Yeah, you can, any search engine, you can put in MMR Baton Rouge, and it's going to pull it up as well. If you're looking for a career, if you're looking for something new in a direction to lead you to the right way, that is the place you need to go. One more time, MMRGRP.com. your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. <laughs> 